The world is a canvas of your imagination. Neville Goddard Keep your mouth shut whenever you are happy. Keep your mouth shut whenever you are sad. Don't chase happiness. Just stay positive and you will experience joy. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. Aristotle. Don't let yourself be controlled by three things. People, money, or past experience. No single thing will solve all your problems. No goal, no achievement, no relationship, no one will ever fix you. When you know what you want, and want it bad enough, you will find a way to get it. Jim Rohn As almost all her other faculties and properties the nature of the universe hath imparted unto every reasonable creature, so this in particular we have received from her, that as whatsoever doth oppose itself unto her, and doth withstand her in her purposes and intentions, she doth, though against its will and intention, bring it about to herself, to serve herself of it, in the execution of her own destinated ends, and so by this though not intended cooperation of it, with herself makes it part of herself whether it will or no. So may every reasonable creature, what crosses and impediments soever it meets with in the course of this mortal life, it may use them as fit and proper objects to the furtherance of whatsoever it intended and absolutely proposed unto itself as its natural end and happiness. It's easy to fool someone. It's hard to convince them that they've been fooled. Let go, or be dragged. To be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. Cicero Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. If you hate, then you have been defeated. The moment you accept what troubles you've been given, the door will open. Rumi They contemn one another, and yet they seek to please one another. And while as they seek to surpass one another in worldly pomp and greatness, they most debase and prostitute themselves in their better part, one to another. You are the only person you can control. What really ruins our character is the fact that none of us looks back over his life. A man grows most tired while standing still. Chinese proverb. The world is what it is. You are what you are. Be humble enough to know you can lose everything, but be confident enough to know you can get it all back. The pain of failure is nothing compared to the pain of quitting. David Goggins Will any contemn me? Let him look to that upon what grounds he does it. My care shall be that I may never be found either doing or speaking anything that doth truly deserve contempt. Will any hate me? Let him look to that. I, for my part, will be kind and loving unto all, and even unto him that hates me, 
whomsoever he be, will I be ready to show his error, not by way of exprobation or ostentation of my patience, but ingenuously and meekly, such as was that famous Fauchon, if so be that he did not dissemble. For it is inwardly that these things must be, that the gods who look inwardly, and not upon the outward appearance, may behold a man truly free from all indignation and grief. For what hurt can it be unto thee whatsoever any man else doth, as long as thou mayest do that which is proper and suitable to thine own nature? Wilt not thou, a man wholly appointed to be both what, and as the common good shall require, accept of that which is now seasonable to the nature of the universe? No one knows what his powers are until he uses them. Time is everything, and one day it will define you. If you've seen the present, you've seen all things, from time immemorial into all of eternity. For everything that happens is related and the same. Marcus Aurelius There are one thousand lessons in defeat, but only one in victory. Own your truth. It can be hard, but not nearly as hard as spending your life running away from it. Your life does not get better by chance, it gets better by change. Jim Rohn in what a man ought to be exercised who has made proficiency, and that we neglect the chief things. There are three things in which a man ought to exercise himself who would be wise and good. The first concerns the desires and the aversions, that a man may not fail to get what he desires, and that he may not fall into that which he does not desire. The second concerns the movements toward and the movements from an object, and generally in doing what a man ought to do, that he may act according to order, to reason, and not carelessly. The third thing concerns freedom from deception and rashness in judgment, and generally it concerns the ascents. Of these topics the chief and the most urgent is that which relates to the affects. For an affect is produced in no other way than by a failing to obtain that which a man desires, or a falling into that which a man would wish to avoid. This is that which brings in perturbations, disorders, bad fortune, misfortunes, sorrows, lamentations and envy, that which makes men envious and jealous. And by these causes we are unable even to listen to the precepts of reason. The second topic concerns the duties of a man. For I ought not to be free from affects like a statue, but I ought to maintain the relations natural and acquired, as a pious man, as a son, as a father, as a citizen. The third topic is that which immediately concerns those who are making proficiency, that which concerns the security of the other two, so that not even in sleep any appearance unexamined may surprise us, nor in intoxication nor in melancholy. This, it may be said, is above our power. But the present philosophers, neglecting the first topic and the second, employ themselves on the third, using sophistical arguments, making conclusions from questioning, employing hypotheses, lying. For a man must, as it is said, when employed on these matters, take care that he is not deceived. Who must? the wise and good man. This then is all that is wanting to you. Have you successfully worked out the rest? Are you free from deception in the matter of money? If you see a beautiful girl, do you resist the appearance? If your neighbor obtains an estate by will, are you not vexed? Now is there nothing else wanting to you except unchangeable firmness of mind? Wretch, you hear these very things with fear and anxiety that some person may despise you, 
and with inquiries about what any person may say about you. And if a man come and tell you that in a certain conversation in which the question was, Who is the best philosopher? A man who was present said that a certain person was the chief philosopher. Your little soul, which was only a finger's length, stretches out to two cubits. But if another who is present, you are mistaken. It is not worthwhile to listen to a certain person, for what does he know? He has only the first principles and no more. Then you are confounded. You grow pale. You cry out immediately. I will show him who I am, that I am a great philosopher. It is seen by these very things. Why do you wish to show it by others? Do you not know that Diogenes pointed out one of the sophists in this way by stretching out his middle finger? And then when the man was wild with rage, this, he said, is the certain person. I pointed him out to you. For a man is not shown by the finger as a stone or a piece of wood, but when any person shows the man's principles, then he shows him as a man. Let us look at your principles also. For is it not plain that you value not at all your own will, but you look externally to things which are independent of your will? For instance, what will a certain person say? And what will people think of you? Will you be considered a man of learning? Have you read Chrysippus or Antipater? For if you have read Archidemus also, you have everything. Why are you still uneasy, lest you should not show us who you are? Would you let me tell you what manner of man you have shown us that you are? You have exhibited yourself to us as a mean fellow, querulous, passionate, cowardly, finding fault with everything, blaming everybody, never quiet, vain. This is what you have exhibited to us. Go away now and read Archidemus. Then, if a mouse should leap down and make a noise, you are a dead man. For such a death awaits you as it did. What was the man's name? Crinus. And he too was proud, because he understood Archidemus. Wretch, will you not dismiss these things that do not concern you at all? These things are suitable to those who are able to learn them without perturbation, to those who can say, I am not subject to anger, to grief, to envy, I am not hindered, I am not restrained. What remains for me? I have leisure, I am tranquil. Let us see how we must deal with sophistical arguments. Let us see how when a man has accepted an hypothesis, he shall not be led away to anything absurd. To them such things belong. To those who are happy it is appropriate to light a fire, to dine, if they choose, both to sing and to dance. But when the vessel is sinking, you come to me and hoist the sails. Never trust a lonely friend because, while some find strength in solitude, others may lose their way in it. Not everyone has a heart like yours. I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. Richard P. Feynman What can happen at any time can happen today. No man can escape his destiny. The next inquiry being how he may best live the time that he has to live. The power of positive thinking is the ability to generate a feeling of certainty in yourself when nothing in the environment supports you. Tony Robbins If you want to make progress, submit to appearing foolish and stupid with regard to external things. Do not wish to appear knowledgeable about anything, and if others think you amount to something, distrust yourself. 
for you should know that it is not easy both to keep your moral character in accordance with nature and to keep secure external things. For in attending to one, you will inevitably neglect the other. The ultimate bully is worry. It takes everything and gives nothing. You'll never know your potential if you are afraid to be alone. If God listened to the prayers of men, all men would quickly have perished, for they are forever praying for evil against one another. Epicurus Everyone leaves. Learn how to survive alone. If you were born today, you'd be an idiot. The world would be way too complex to figure out. That's why we're all idiots. Optimism is the one quality more associated with success and happiness than any other. Brian Tracy He hath a stronger body and is a better wrestler than I. What then? Is he more bountiful? Is he more modest? Doth he bear all adverse chances with more equanimity? or with his neighbor's offenses with more meekness and gentleness than I. Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. You need to learn how to select your thoughts just the same way you select your clothes every day. This is a power you can cultivate if you want to control things in your life. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Leo Tolstoy People will often take advantage of your kindness if you let them. Value experience over possessions because memories are the real treasures of life. Decide exactly what you want in every area of your life. You can't hit a target that you can't see. Brian Tracy That we do not strive to use our opinions about good and evil. Where is the good? In the will. Where is the evil? In the will. Where is neither of them? in those things which are independent of the will. Well then, does anyone among us think of these lessons out of the schools? Does anyone meditate by himself to give an answer to things as in the case of questions? Is it day? Yes. Is it night? No. Well, is the number of stars even? I cannot say. When money is shown to you, have you studied to make the proper answer? that money is not a good thing? Have you practiced yourself in these answers, or only against sophisms? Why do you wonder then if in the cases which you have studied, in those you have improved, but in those which you have not studied, in those you remain the same? When the rhetorician knows that he has written well, that he has committed to memory what he has written, and brings an agreeable voice, why is he still anxious? Because he is not satisfied with having studied. What then does he want? To be praised by the audience? For the purpose then of being able to practice declamation, he has been disciplined, but with respect to praise and blame he has not been disciplined. For when did he hear from anyone what praise is, what blame is, what the nature of each is, what kind of praise should be sought, or what kind of blame should be shunned? And when did he practice this discipline which follows these words? Why then do you still wonder if, in the matters which a man has learned, there he surpasses others, and in those in which he has not been disciplined, 
there he is the same with the many. So the lute player knows how to play, sings well, and has a fine dress, and yet he trembles when he enters on the stage. For these matters he understands, but he does not know what a crowd is, nor the shouts of a crowd, nor what ridicule is. Neither does he know what anxiety is, whether it is our work or the work of another, whether it is possible to stop it or not. For this reason, if he has been praised, he leaves the theater puffed up. But if he has been ridiculed, the swollen bladder has been punctured and subsides. This is the case also with ourselves. What do we admire? Externals. About what things are we busy? Externals. And have we any doubt then why we fear or why we are anxious? What then happens when we think the things which are coming on us to be evils? It is not in our power not to be afraid. It is not in our power not to be anxious. Then we say, Lord God, how shall I not be anxious? Fool, have you not hands? Did not God make them for you? Sit down now and pray that your nose may not run. Wipe yourself rather and do not blame him. Well then, has he given to you nothing in the present case? Has he not given to you endurance? Has he not given to you magnanimity? Has he not given to you manliness? When you have such hands, do you look for one who shall wipe your you saint nose? But we neither study these things nor care for them. Give me a man who cares how he shall do anything, not for the obtaining of a thing, but who cares about his own energy. What man, when he is walking about, cares for his own energy? Who, when he is deliberating, cares about his own deliberation, and not about obtaining that about which he deliberates. And if he succeeds, he is elated and says, How well we have deliberated! Did I not tell you, brother, that it is impossible when we have thought about anything that it should not turn out thus? But if the thing should turn out otherwise, the wretched man is humbled. He knows not even what to say about what has taken place. Who among us for the sake of this matter has consulted a seer? Who among us as to his actions has not slept in indifference? Who? Give to me one that I may see the man whom I have long been looking for, who is truly noble and ingenuous, whether young or old. Name him. Why then are we still surprised if we are well practiced in thinking about matters, but in our acts are low without decency, worthless, cowardly, impatient of labor, altogether bad. For we do not care about things, nor do we study them. But if we had feared not death or banishment, but fear itself, we should have studied not to fall into those things which appear to us evils. Now in the school we are irritable and wordy. And if any little question arises about any of these things, we are able to examine them fully. But drag us to practice, and you will find us miserably shipwrecked. Let some disturbing appearance come on us, and you will know what we have been studying and in what we have been exercising ourselves. Consequently, through want of discipline, we are always adding something to the appearance and representing things to be greater than what they are. For instance, as to myself, when I am on a voyage and look down on the deep sea, or look round on it and see no land, I am out of my mind and imagine that I must drink up all this water if I am wrecked. And it does not occur to me that three pints are enough. God knows when to send you exactly what you need. People often confuse stress with responsibility. Be not afraid of growing slowly. Be afraid only of standing still. Chinese proverb. No regrets, just lessons. No worries, just acceptance. No expectations, just gratitude. A brave man dies but once, 
a coward many times. Every time you judge someone else, you reveal an unhealed part of yourself. Jay Shetty Whatsoever it is that thou goest about, consider of it by thyself, and ask thyself, What? Because I shall do this no more when I am dead, should therefore death seem grievous unto me? It's okay. They are only human. What people say when they are angry aren't things they mean. They regret it often. Forgive angry people. Do not be afraid to make a hard choice. The hard choices are the best ones you end up making. Rule your mind or it will rule you, Horus. When you get married, everything good about your relationship and everything bad about your relationship intensifies. New beginnings are disguised as painful endings. The highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. Wayne Dyer About exercise. We ought not to make our exercises consist in means contrary to nature and adapted to cause admiration. For if we do so, we who call ourselves philosophers shall not differ at all from jugglers. For it is difficult even to walk on a rope, and not only difficult, but it is also dangerous. Ought we for this reason to practice walking on a rope or setting up a palm tree or embracing statues? By no means. Everything which is difficult and dangerous is not suitable for practice, but that is suitable which conduces to the working out of that which is proposed to us as a thing to be worked out. To live with desire and aversion, free from restraint. And what is this? Neither to be disappointed in that which you desire, nor to fall into anything which you would avoid. Toward this object then exercise ought to tend, for since it is not possible to have your desire not disappointed and your aversion free from falling into that which you would avoid, great and constant practice you must know that if you allow your desire and aversion to turn to things which are not within the power of the will, you will neither have your desire capable of attaining your object nor your aversion free from the power of avoiding that which you would avoid. And since strong habit leads, and we are accustomed to employ desire and aversion only to things which are not within the power of our will, we ought to oppose to this habit a contrary habit, and where there is great slipperiness in the appearances there to oppose the habit of exercise. I am rather inclined to pleasure. I will incline to the contrary side above measure for the sake of exercise. I am averse to pain. I will rub and exercise against this the appearances which are presented to me for the purpose of withdrawing my aversion from every such thing. For who is a practitioner in exercise? He who practices not using his desire and applies his aversion only to things which are within the power of his will and practices most in the things which are difficult to conquer. For this reason, one man must practice himself more against one thing and another against another thing. What then? Is it to the purpose to set up a palm tree or to carry about a tent of skins or a mortar and a pestle? Practice, man, if you are irritable to endure if you are abused, not to be vexed if you are treated with dishonor. Then you will make so much progress that even if a man strikes you, you will say to yourself, Imagine that you have embraced a statue. Then also exercise yourself to use wine properly, so as not to drink much. 
for in this also there are men who foolishly practice themselves. But first of all you should abstain from it, and abstain from a young girl and dainty cakes. Then at last, if occasion presents itself, for the purpose of trying yourself at a proper time, you will descend into the arena to know if appearances overpower you as they did formerly. But at first, fly far from that which is stronger than yourself. The contest is unequal between a charming young girl and a beginner in philosophy. The earthen pitcher, as the saying is, and the rock do not agree. After the desire and the aversion comes the second topic of the movements toward action and the withdrawals from it. That you may be obedient to reason, that you do nothing out of season or place, or contrary to any propriety of the kind. The third topic concerns the ascents, which is related to the things which are persuasive and attractive. For as Socrates said, we ought not to live a life without examination. So we ought not to accept an appearance without examination, but we should say, wait, let me see what you are and whence you come. Like the watch at night, show me the pass. Have you the signal from nature which the appearance that may be accepted ought to have? And finally, whatever means are applied to the body by those who exercise it, if they tend in any way toward desire and it, aversion, they also may be fit means of exercise. But if they are for display, they are the indications of one who has turned himself toward something external, and who is hunting for something else, and who looks for spectators who will say, Oh, the great man! For this reason, Apollonius said, Well, when you intend to exercise yourself for your own advantage, and you are thirsty from heat, take in a mouthful of cold water and spit it out and tell nobody. Do your best and trust the process. When anger rises, think of the consequences. Virtue is a habit. Aristotle. This quote emphasizes the importance of practice and repetition in developing virtuous character traits. Prayers do not change the world, but prayers change people, and people change the world. You will never be truly happy if you constantly seek validation from others. The key to success is to focus our conscious mind on things we desire, not things we fear. Brian Tracy Under, above and about are the motions of the elements. But the motion of virtue is none of those motions, but is somewhat more excellent and divine, whose way to speed and prosper in it must be through a way that is not easily comprehended. When you are finished changing, you're finished. Everyone wants to see you succeed but some will even go out of their way to see you fail. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory will swell when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. Abraham Lincoln Act as if you were already happy, and that will tend to make you happy. Make peace with your past so it won't screw up the present. Everything you need is within you, Muji. This 
What is it in itself, and by itself, according to its proper constitution? What is the substance of it? What is the matter or proper use? What is the form or efficient cause? What is it for in this world, and how long will it abide? Thus must thou examine all things that present themselves unto thee. If you're being judged no matter what, so be who you want to be. A house is not a home unless it contains food and fire for the mind as well as the body. Nothing exists except atoms and free space. Everything else is opinion. Democritus. You are responsible for your own happiness. If you expect others to make you happy, you will always be disappointed. The magic you are looking for is in the work you're avoiding. The more you seek the uncomfortable, the more you will become comfortable. Jocko Willing It is a sign of foolishness to spend a lot of time on things that concern the body, such as exercising a great deal, eating and drinking a lot, defecating and having sex. These are things that should be done in passing. Instead, you should turn your whole attention to the care of your mind. Friends want you to do good, but not better than them. Beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship. Loss is nothing else but change, and change is nature's delight. Marcus Aurelius Everyone at some time or another sits down to a banquet of consequences. People will say almost anything when they're happy. Be wise and careful of this one. The doer alone learneth. Friedrich Nietzsche, thus spoke Zarathustra. If then thou shalt separate from thyself, that is from thy mind, Whatsoever other men either do or say, or whatsoever thou thyself hast heretofore either done or said, and all troublesome thoughts concerning the future, and whatsoever, as either belonging to thy body or life, is without the jurisdiction of thine own will, and whatsoever in the ordinary course of human chances and accidents doth happen unto thee, so that thy mind, keeping herself loose and free from all outward coincidental entanglements, always in a readiness to depart, shall live by herself and to herself, doing that which is just, accepting whatsoever doth happen, and speaking the truth always. If, I say, thou shalt separate from thy mind whatsoever by sympathy might adhere unto it, and all time, both past and future, and shalt make thyself in all points and respects, like unto Empedocles his allegorical sphere, all round and circular, and shalt think of no longer life than that which is now present, then shalt thou be truly able to pass the remainder of thy days without troubles and distractions, nobly and generously disposed, and in good favor and correspondency with that spirit which is within thee. If you love something so much, let it go. If it comes back, it was meant to be. If it doesn't, it never was. A brave man dies but once, a coward many times. For we are made for cooperation. Marcus Aurelius Life has a way of testing a person's will, either by having nothing happen at all, or by having everything happen at once.
Sometimes a person doesn't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. Alan Watts Of things that are external, happen what will to that which can suffer by external accidents. Those things that suffer, let them complain themselves, if they will. As for me, as long as I conceive no such thing, that that which has happened is evil, I have no hurt, and it is in my power not to conceive any such thing. It all adds up. Just wait, things will get better. The greatest wealth is to live content with little, Plato. Time always exposes what you truly mean to someone. Just because you miss someone doesn't mean you need them back in your life. Be a lifelong student. The more you learn, the more you earn, and the more self-confidence you will have. Brian Tracy against those who embrace philosophical opinions only in words. The argument called the ruling argument appears to have been proposed from such principles as these. There is in fact a common contradiction between one another in these three positions, each two being in contradiction to the third. The propositions are that everything past must of necessity be true, that an impossibility does not follow a possibility, and that thing is possible which neither is nor t at a t will be true. Diodorus, observing this contradiction, employed the probative force of the first two for the demonstration of this proposition, that nothing is possible which is not true and never will be. Now another will hold these two, that something is possible which is neither true nor ever will be, and that an impossibility does not follow a possibility but he will not allow that everything which is past is necessarily true, as the followers of Cleanthes seem to think, and Antipater copiously defended them. But others maintain the other two propositions, that a thing is possible which is neither true nor will he true, and that everything which is past is necessarily true. But then they will maintain that an impossibility can follow a possibility, but it is impossible to maintain these three propositions because of their common contradiction. If then any man should ask me which of these propositions do I maintain, I will answer him that I do not know. But I have received this story that Diodorus maintained one opinion, the followers of Panthoides, I think, and Cleanthes maintained another opinion, and those of Chrysippus a third. What then is your opinion? I was not made for this purpose to examine the appearances that occur to me and to compare what others say and to form an opinion of my own on the thing. Therefore I differ not at all from the grammarian. Who was Hector's father? Priam. Who were his brothers? Alexander and Dephobus. Who was their mother? Hecuba. I have heard this story. From whom? From Homer. And Hellanicus also, I think, writes about the same things, and perhaps others like him. And what further have I about the ruling argument? Nothing. But if I am a vain man, especially at a banquet, I surprise the guests by enumerating those who have written on these matters. Both Chrysippus has written wonderfully in his first book about possibilities, and Cleanthes has written specially on the subject and Archidemus. Antipater also has written not only in his work about possibilities, but also separately in his work on the ruling argument. Have you not read the work? I have not read it, 
Read, and what profit will a man have from it? He will be more trifling and impertinent than he is now. For what else have you reigned by reading it? What opinion have you formed on this subject? None, but you will tell us of Helen and Priam, and the island of Calypso, which never was and never will be. And in this matter, indeed, it is of no great importance if you retain the story, but have formed no opinion of your own. But in matters of morality, this happens to us much more than in these things of which we are speaking. Speak to me about good and evil. Listen, the wind from Ilium to Siconian shores brought me. Of things some are good, some are bad, and others are indifferent. The good then are the virtues and the things which partake of the virtues, the bad are the vices and the things which partake of them, and the indifferent are the things which lie between the virtues and the vices, wealth, health, life, death, pleasure, pain. Whence do you know this? Hellanicus says it in his Egyptian history. For what difference does it make to say this? or to say that Diogenes has it in his ethic, or Chrysippus or Cleanthes. Have you then examined any of these things and formed an opinion of your own? Show how you are used to behave in a storm on shipboard? Do you remember this division, when the sail rattles and a man who knows nothing of times and seasons stands by you when you are screaming and says, Tell me, I ask you by the gods what you were saying just now. Is it a vice to suffer shipwreck? Does it participate in vice? Will you not take up a stick and lay it on his head? What have we to do with you, man? We are perishing, and you come to mock us? But if Caesar sent for you to answer a charge, do you remember the distinction? If when you are going in, pale and trembling, a person should come up to you and say, Why do you tremble, man? What is the matter about which you are engaged? Does Caesar who sits within give virtue and vice to those who go into him? You reply, Why do you also mock me and add to my present sorrows? Still tell me, philosopher, tell me why you tremble. Is it not death of which you run the risk, or a prison, or pain of the body, or banishment, or disgrace? What else is there? Is there any vice or anything which partakes of vice? What then did you use to say of these things? What have you to do with me, man? My own evils are enough for me. And you say right. Your own evils are enough for you. Your baseness, your cowardice, your boasting which you showed when you sat in the school. Why did you decorate yourself with what belonged to others? Why did you call yourself a stoic? Observe yourselves thus in your actions, and you will find to what sect you belong. You will find that most of you are Epicureans, a few peripatetics, and those feeble. For wherein will you show that you really consider virtue equal to everything else or even superior? But show me a Stoic if you can, where or how. But you can show me an endless number who utter small arguments of the Stoics. For do the same persons repeat the Epicurean opinions any worse, and the peripatetic do they not handle them also with equal accuracy? Who then is a Stoic? As we call a statue Phidiac, which is fashioned according to the art of Phidias. So show me a man who is fashioned according to the doctrines which he utters. Show me a man who is sick and happy, in danger and happy, dying and happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Show him, I desire by the gods to see a Stoic, you cannot show me one fashion so, but show me at least one who is forming, who has shown a tendency to be a Stoic. Do me this favor. Do not grudge an old man seeing a sight which I have not seen yet. Do you think that you must show me the Zeus of Phidias, or the Athena, a work of ivory and gold? Let any of you show me a human soul ready to think as God does, and not to blame either God or man, ready not to be disappointed about anything, not to consider himself damaged by anything, not to be angry, not to be envious, not to be jealous. And why should I not say it direct? 
desirous from a man to become a god, and in this poor mortal body thinking of his fellowship with Zeus. Show me the man, but you cannot. Why then do you delude yourselves and cheat others? And why do you put on a guise which does not belong to you, and walk about being thieves and pilferers of these names and things which do not belong to you? And now I am your teacher, and you are instructed in my school. And I have this purpose, to make you free from restraint, compulsion, hindrance, to make you free, prosperous, happy, looking to God in everything small and great. And you are here to learn and practice these things. Why then do you not finish the work, if you also have such a purpose as you ought to have, and if I, in addition to the purpose, also have such qualification as I ought to have? What is that which is wanting? When I see an artificer and material by him, I expect the work. Here then, is the artificer, here the material. What is it that we want? Is not the thing one that can be taught? It is. Is it not then in our power? The only thing of all that is in our power. Neither wealth is in our power, nor health, nor reputation, nor in a word anything else except the right use of appearances. This is by nature free from restraint. This alone is free from impediment. Why then do you not finish the work? Tell me the reason. For it is either through my fault that you do not finish it, or through your own fault, or through the nature of the thing. The thing itself is possible, and the only thing in our power. It remains then that the fault is either in me or in you, or what is nearer the truth in both. Well then, are you willing that we begin at last to bring such a purpose into this school and to take no notice of the past? Let us only make a beginning. Trust to me and you will see. You cannot change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails to reach your destination. People of higher morality do not consider themselves moral. Therefore, they have the highest morality. By three methods we may learn wisdom. First, by reflection, which is noblest. Second, by imitation, which is easiest. And third, by experience, which is the bitterest. Confucius Focus on your growth, values, and cultivating kindness. The right person will find their way to you at the perfect moment, without the need for chasing. It is better to light one small candle than to curse the darkness. It's not over until you win. Les Brown. Again, she compasseth the whole world, and penetrateth into the vanity, and mere outside, wanting substance and solidity of it, and stretcheth herself unto the infiniteness of eternity, and the revolution or restoration of all things after a certain period of time, to the same state and place as before, she fetcheth about, and doth comprehend in herself, and considers with all, and sees clearly this, that neither they that shall follow us, shall see any new thing that we have not seen, nor they that went before anything more than we. You should never sacrifice what you could be for what you are. Be impatient with actions, but patient with results. An idea that is developed and put into action is more important than an idea that exists only as an idea. Buddha Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances 
to choose one's own way. Leave nothing for tomorrow which can be done today. One of the biggest mistakes we make is assuming that other people think the way we think. Jay Shetty If you set your heart on philosophy, be prepared from the very start to be ridiculed and jeered at by many people who will say, Suddenly he's come back to us a philosopher, and where do you suppose he got that supercilious look? Now, for your part, do not show a supercilious look, but hold fast to the things that seem best to you, as someone who has been assigned to this post by God. And remember that if you persist in your principles, those who at first ridiculed you will later admire you. But if, on the other hand, you are defeated by such people, you will be doubly ridiculed. The man who says he can and the man who says he cannot are both correct. Holding on to things will always make you more stressed. It is thus with farming. If you do one thing late, you will be late in all your work. Cato the Elder Being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, while loving someone deeply gives you courage. Stop doing what is easy or popular. Start doing what is right. Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. Carl Jung Suppose that at the palestra somebody hath all to torn thee with his nails, and hath broken thy head. Well, thou art wounded. Yet thou dost not exclaim, thou art not offended with him. Thou dost not suspect him for it afterwards, as one that watcheth to do thee a mischief. Yea, even then, though thou dost thy best to save thyself from him, yet not from him as an enemy, it is not by way of any suspicious indignation, but by way of gentle and friendly declination. Keep the same mind and disposition in other parts of thy life also. For many things there be, which we must conceit and apprehend, as though we had had to do with an antagonist at the palestra. For as I said, it is very possible for us to avoid and decline, though we neither suspect nor hate. People don't resist change, they resist being changed. Avoid gossip at all costs. It's poison to your mind. Ex nihilo nihil fit. Nothing comes from nothing. Lucretius. Holding on to things will always make you more stressed. Life has many different chapters for us. One bad chapter doesn't mean it's the end of the book. If you have the desire and passion to do something, and it's within God's will, you will achieve it. Nick Vujicic against a person who showed his partisanship in an unseemly way in a theater, the governor of Epirus having shown his favor to an actor in an unseemly way and being publicly blamed on this account, and afterward having reported to Epictetus that he was blamed and that he was vexed at those who blamed him, Epictetus said, What harm have they been doing? These men also were acting as partisans, as you were doing. The governor replied, Does then any person show his partisanship in this way? 
when they see you, said Epictetus, who are their governor, a friend of Caesar and his deputy, showing partisanship in this way? Was it not to be expected that they also should show their partisanship in the same way? For if it is not right to show partisanship in this way, do not do so yourself. And if it is right, why are you angry if they followed your example? For whom have the many to imitate except you, who are their superiors? To whose example should they look when they go to the theater except yours? See how the deputy of Caesar looks on. He has cried out, and I too then will cry out. He springs up from his seat, and I will spring up. His slaves sit in various parts of the theater and call out, I have no slaves, but I will myself cry out as much as I can, and as loud as all of them together. You ought then to know when you enter the theater that you enter as a rule and example to the rest how they ought to look at the acting. Why then did they blame you? Because every man hates that which is a hindrance to him. They wished one person to be crowned. You wished another. They were a hindrance to you, and you were a hindrance to them. You were found to be the stronger, and they did what they could. They blamed that which hindered them. What then would you have? That you should do what you please, and they should not even say what they please. And what is the wonder? Do not the husbandmen abuse Zeus when they are hindered by him? Do not the sailors abuse him? Do they ever cease abusing Caesar? What then does not Zeus know? Is not what is said reported to Caesar? What then does he do? He knows that if he punished all who abuse him, he would have nobody to rule over. What then? When you enter the theater, you ought to say not, let Sophron be crowned, but you ought to say this, come, let me maintain my will in this matter so that it shall be conformable to nature. No man is dearer to me than myself. It would be ridiculous then for me to be hurt, injured, in order that another who is an actor may be crowned. Whom then do I wish to gain the prize? Why the actor who does gain the prize? and so he will always gain the prize whom I wish to gain it. But I wish Sophron to be crowned. Celebrate as many games as you choose in your own house, Nemean, Pythian, Isthmian, Olympian, and proclaim him victor. But in public do not claim more than your due, nor attempt to appropriate to yourself what belongs to all. If you do not consent to this, bear being abused. For when you do the same as the many, you put yourself on the same level with them. The most exquisite pleasure is giving pleasure to others. Ignorance is the root and stem of every evil. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Marcus Aurelius No one cares except you. Do what lifts you up in your eyes. What people say does not matter. Learn to say no without explaining yourself. You can't make positive choices for the rest of your life without an environment that makes those choices easy, natural, and enjoyable. Deepak Chopra Of Providence Do not wonder if for other animals than man all things are provided for the body. Not only food and drink, but beds also, and they have no need of shoes, nor bed materials, nor clothing. But we require all these additional things. For animals not being made for themselves, but for service. It was not fit for them to be made so as to need other things. For consider what it would be for us to take care not only of ourselves, 
but also about cattle and asses, how they should be clothed, and how shod, and how they should eat and drink. Now as soldiers are ready for their commander, shod, clothed, and armed, but it would be a hard thing for the Chiliarch to go round and shoe or clothe his thousand men. So also nature has formed the animals which are made for service, all ready, prepared and requiring no further care. So one little boy with only a stick drives the cattle. But now we, instead of being thankful that we need not take the same care of animals as of ourselves, complain of God on our own account. And yet, in the name of Zeus and the gods, any one thing of those which exist would be enough to make a man perceive the providence of God, at least a man who is modest and grateful. And speak not to me now of the great things, but only of this, that milk is produced from grass, and cheese from milk and wool from skins. Who made these things or devised them? No one, you say. Oh, amazing shamelessness and stupidity. Well, let us omit the works of nature and contemplate her smaller acts. Is there anything less useful than the hair on the chin? What then has not nature used this hair also in the most suitable manner possible? Has she not by it distinguished the male and the female? Does not the nature of every man forthwith proclaim from a distance, I am a man? As such approach me, as such speak to me. Look for nothing else. See the signs? Again, in the case of women, as she has mingled something softer in the voice, so she has also deprived them of hair on the chin. You say, not so. The human animal ought to have been left without marks of distinction, and each of us should have been obliged to proclaim, I am a man. But how is not the sign beautiful and becoming and venerable? How much more beautiful than the cock's comb? How much more becoming than the lion's mane? For this reason, we ought to preserve the signs which God has given. We ought not to throw them away, nor to confound, as much as we can, the distinctions of the sexes. Are these the only works of providence in us? and what words are sufficient to praise them and set them forth according to their worth. For if we had understanding, ought we to do anything else both jointly and severally than to sing hymns and bless the Deity and to tell of His benefits? Ought we not when we are digging and plowing and eating to sing this hymn to God? Great is God who has given us such implements with which we shall cultivate the earth. Great is God who has given us hands the power of swallowing, a stomach imperceptible growth, and the power of breathing while we sleep. This is what we ought to sing on every occasion, and to sing the greatest and most divine hymn for giving us the faculty of comprehending these things and using a proper way. Well then, since most of you have become blind, ought there not to be some man to fill this office? and on behalf of all to sing the hymn to God. For what else can I do, a lame old man, than sing hymns to God? If then I was a nightingale, I would do the part of a nightingale. If I were a swan, I would do like a swan. But now I am a rational creature, and I ought to praise God. This is my work. I do it, nor will I desert this post, so long as I am allowed to keep it and I exhort you to join in this same song. When you know yourself, you stop fearing missing out on things that are not meant for you. Most people are a complete waste of time. A smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. Franklin D. Roosevelt Sometimes things are falling apart. They may actually be falling into place. Life has a funny way of surprising us when we're not looking for it.
He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Friedrich Nietzsche, Twilight of the Idols. Of everything thou must consider from whence it came, of what things it doth consist, and into what it will be changed, what will be the nature of it, or what it will be like unto when it is changed, and that it can suffer no hurt by this change. And as for other men's either foolishness or wickedness, that it may not trouble and grieve thee. First generally thus, what reference have I unto these? And that we are all born for one another's good, then more particularly after another consideration. As a ram is first in a flock of sheep, and a bull in a herd of cattle, so am I born to rule over them. Begin yet higher, even from this. If atoms be not the beginning of all things, then which to believe nothing can be more absurd, then must we needs grant that there is a nature that doth govern the universe. If such a nature, then are all worse things made for the better's sake, and all better for one another's sake. Secondly, what manner of men they be at board, and upon their beds, and so forth. Don't let people know too much about you. Most people don't care, and some secretly want you to fail. Arouse the other person to an eager want. He who can do this has the whole world with him. To be wronged is nothing unless you continue to remember it. Confucius. Given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. Planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. In the silence of the mind, the self reveals itself. Nisargadatta Maharaj Shiro, my heart smiled within me. They will accuse even virtue herself with heinous and opprobrious words. Wisdom is not wisdom when it is derived from books alone. Study the past if you would define the future. Hang on to your youthful enthusiasms. You'll be able to use them better when you're older. Seneca People of higher morality do not consider themselves moral. Therefore, they have the highest morality. Both the optimist and the pessimist contribute to society. The optimist invents the airplane, the pessimist the parachute. Life has no limitations except the ones you make. Les Brown He that knoweth not what the world is, knoweth not where he himself is. And he that knoweth not what the world was made for, cannot possibly know either what are the qualities or what is the nature of the world. Now he that in either of these is to seek, for what he himself was made is ignorant also. What then dost thou think of that man, who proposeth unto himself, as a matter of great moment, the noise and applause of men, who both where they are and what they are themselves are altogether ignorant? Dost thou desire to be commended of that man who thrice in one hour perchance doth himself curse himself? Dost thou desire to please him who pleaseth not himself? Or dost thou think that he pleaseth himself who doth use to repent himself almost of everything that he doth? If you saturate your mind with positive thoughts, it will sustain you in any situation.
Just because you want them to happen that way doesn't mean things will happen in a certain way. Learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. Marcus Aurelius Action is ten times more valuable than reading and planning. Experience is the teacher of all things. Never forget your roots, but understand that you have to leave them to grow. David Goggins If ever thou sawest either a hand or a foot or a head lying by itself, in some place or other, as cut off from the rest of the body, such must thou conceive him to make himself, as much as in him lieth, that either is offended with anything that has happened, whatsoever it be, and as it were divides himself from it, or that commits anything against the natural law of mutual correspondence and society among men, or he that commits any act of uncharitableness. Whosoever thou art, thou art such, thou art cast forth, I know not whither out of the general unity, which is according to nature. Thou went born indeed apart, but now thou hast cut thyself off. However, herein is matter of joy and exultation, that thou mayst be united again. God hath not granted it unto any other part, that once separated and cut off, it might be reunited and come together again. But behold, that goodness how great and immense it is, which hath so much esteemed man, as at first he was so made, that he needed not, except he would himself, have divided himself from the whole. So once divided and cut off, it hath so provided and ordered it, that if he would himself he might return and grow together again, and be admitted into its former rank and place of a part, as he was before. If you have to feel good about it, then you're doing the wrong thing. You just have to keep going. The feeling will pass, but you will remain. Patience is power. Ninety-nine percent of failures come from people who make excuses. George Washington We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. It's okay to just chill. Success in life is the result of good judgment. Good judgment is usually the result of experience. Experience is usually the result of bad judgment. Brian Tracy Why should I grieve myself, who never did willingly grieve any other? One thing rejoices one, and another thing another. As for me, this is my joy, if my understanding be right and sound, as neither averse from any man, nor refusing any of those things which as a man I am subject unto. If I can look upon all things in the world meekly and kindly, accept all things, and carry myself towards everything according to the true worth of the thing itself. In any given moment, we have two options, to step forward into growth or step back into safety. Better 50% now than 100% never. Sometimes even to live is an act of courage, Seneca. If you are in your 20s, many relationships will fail and not work, but function as learning exercises. Because of this, don't stress so much. It's all just practice until you're married. Only those who have a why to live for can bear almost any how.
If we are peaceful, if we are happy, we can smile and blossom like a flower, and everyone in our family, our entire society, will benefit from our peace. Tishnat Han. Miscellaneous. When some person asked him how it happened that since reason has been more cultivated by the men of the present age, the progress made in former times was greater. In what respect, he answered, has it been more cultivated now? And in what respect was the progress greater then? For in that in which it has now been more cultivated, in that also the progress will now be found. At present it has been cultivated for the purpose of resolving syllogisms, and progress is made. But in former times it was cultivated for the purpose of maintaining the governing faculty in a condition conformable to nature, and progress was made. Do not, then, mix things which are different, and do not expect, when you are laboring at one thing, to make progress in another. But see if any man among us, when he is intent, see I upon this, the keeping himself in a state conformable to nature and living so always, does not make progress. For you will not find such a man. The good man is invincible, for he does not enter the contest where he is not stronger. If you want to have his land and all that is on it, take the land, take his slaves. Take his magisterial office, take his poor body. But you will not make his desire fail in that which it seeks, nor his aversion fall into that which he would avoid. The only contest into which he enters is that about things which are within the power of his will. How then will he not be invincible? Some person having asked him what is common sense, Epictetus replied, as that may be called a certain common hearing which only distinguishes vocal sounds, and that which distinguishes musical sounds is not common, but artificial. So there are certain things which men who are not altogether perverted see by the common notions which all possess. Such a constitution of the mind is named common sense. It is not easy to exhort weak young men for neither is it easy to hold cheese with a hook. But those who have a good natural disposition, even if you try to turn them aside, cling still more to reason. Wherefore Rufus generally attempted to discourage, and he used this method as a test of those who had a good natural disposition and those who had not. For, it was his habit to say, as a stone, if you cast it upward, will be brought down to the earth by its own nature. So the man whose mind is naturally good, the more you repel him, the more he turns toward that to which he is naturally inclined. Your deepest, darkest moment may be the best thing that ever happens to you. It is not the man who has too little but the man who craves more that is poor. Each man's soul is his genius, Xenocrates. Learn how to say no and mean it. The heart that shares is the heart that's full. Vague goals produce vague results. Jack Canfield. To those who read and discuss for the sake of ostentation, first say to yourself who you wish to be, then do accordingly what you are doing, for in nearly all other things we see this to be so. Those who follow athletic exercises first determine what they wish to be, then do accordingly what follows. If a man is a runner in the long course, there is a certain kind of diet of walking, rubbing and exercise. If a man is a runner in the stadium, all these things are different, 
If he is a pentathlete, they are still more different. So you will find it also in the arts. If you are a carpenter, you will have such and such things. If a worker in metal, such things. For everything that we do, if we refer it to no end, we shall do it to no purpose. And if we refer it to the wrong end, we shall miss the mark. Further, there is a general end or purpose, and a particular purpose. First of all, we must act as a man. What is comprehended in this? We must not be like a sheep, though gentle, nor mischievous, like a wild beast. But the particular cud has reference to each person's mode of life and his will. The lute player acts as a lute player, the carpenter as a carpenter, the philosopher as a philosopher, the rhetorician as a rhetorician. When then you say, come and hear me read to you, take care first of all that you are not doing this without a purpose. Then, if you have discovered that you are doing this with reference to a purpose, consider if it is the right purpose. Do you wish to do good or to be praised? Immediately you hear him saying, to me what is the value of praise from the many? And he says, well, for it is of no value to a musician, so far as he is a musician, nor to a geometrician. Do you then wish to be useful? In what? Tell us that we may run to your audience room. Now can a man do anything useful to others, who has not received something useful himself? No, for neither can a man do anything useful in the carpenter's art, unless he is a carpenter nor in the shoemaker's art, unless he is a shoemaker. Do you wish to know, then, if you have received any advantage? Produce your opinions, philosopher. What is the thing which desire promises? Not to fall in the object. What does aversion promise? Not to fall into that which you would avoid. Well, do we fulfill their promise? Tell me the truth. But if you lie, I will tell you. Lately, when your hearers came together rather coldly and did not give you applause, you went away humbled. Lately, again, when you had been praised, you went about and said to all, What did you think of me? Wonderful master, I swear by all that is dear to me. But how did I treat of that particular matter? Which? The passage in which I described Pan and the nymphs. Excellently. Then do you tell me that in desire and in aversion you are acting according to nature? Be gone. Try to persuade somebody else. Did you not praise a certain person contrary to your opinion? And did you not flatter a certain person who was the son of a senator? Would you wish your own children to be such persons? I hope not. Why then did you praise and flatter him? He is an ingenuous youth and listens well to discourses. How is this? He admires me. You have stated your proof. Then what do you think? Do not these very people secretly despise you? When then a man who is conscious that he has neither done any good nor ever thinks of it, finds a philosopher who says, You have a great natural talent, and you have a candid and good disposition. What else do you think that he says except this? This man has some need of me? Or tell me what act that indicates a great mind has he shown? Observe, he has been in your company a long time. He has listened to your discourses. He has heard you reading. Has he become more modest? Has he been turned to reflect on himself? Has he perceived in what a bad state he is? Has he cast away self-conceit? Does he look for a person to teach him? He does. A man who will teach him to live. No, fool, but how to talk. For it is for this that he admires you also. Listen and hear what he says. This man writes with perfect art, much better than Dion. This is altogether another thing. Does he say, this man is modest, faithful, free from perturbations? And even if he did say it, I should say to him, Since this man is faithful, tell me what this faithful man is. And if he could not tell me, I should add this. 
First understand what you say, then speak. You, then, who are in a wretched plight and gaping after applause and counting your auditors, do you intend to be useful to others? Today many more attended my discourse. Yes, many. We suppose five hundred. That is nothing. Suppose that there were a thousand. Dion never had so many hearers. How could he? And they understand what is said beautifully. What is fine, master, can move even a stone. If you don't value your time, neither will others. If you cannot have a faithful friend, be your own friend. Laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him. It is not things themselves that trouble us, but our judgments about those things. Epictetus This quote emphasizes Stoicism's focus on controlling our internal reactions and perceptions to external events. How much money does it take to make a man happy? Just one more dollar. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Discipline starts every day when the first alarm clock goes off in the morning. Jocko Willing. What a small portion of vast and infinite eternity it is that is allowed unto every one of us, and how soon it vanisheth into the general age of the world, of the common substance and of the common soul also, what a small portion is allotted unto us, and in what a little clod of the whole earth, as it were, it is that thou doest crawl, after thou shalt rightly have considered these things with thyself. Fancy not anything else in the world any more to be of any weight and moment but this, to do that only which thine own nature doth require, and to conform thyself to that which the common nature doth afford. You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. You will look back at your life with much more regret for the things that you didn't do than for the things that you did. If it's endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. Marcus Aurelius Anyone who keeps the ability to see beauty never grows old. Never forget that the only person that cares about your hopes and dreams is you. The only person that is going to make them happen is you. Being at ease with not knowing is crucial for answers to come to you. Eckhart Tolle Consider in my mind, for example's sake, the times of Vespasian. Thou shalt see but the same things, some marrying, some bringing up children, some sick, some dying, some fighting, some feasting, some merchandising, some tilling, some flattering, some boasting, some suspecting, some undermining, some wishing to die, some fretting and murmuring at their present estate, some wooing, some hoarding, some seeking after magistracies, and some after kingdoms, and is not that their age quite over and ended? Again, consider now the times of Trajan. There, likewise, thou seest the very selfsame things, and that age also is now over and ended. In the like manner, consider other periods, both of times and of whole nations, and see how many men, after they had with all their might and main intended and prosecuted some one worldly thing or other did soon after drop away and were resolved into the elements. 
but especially thou must call to mind them, whom thou thyself in thy lifetime hast known much distracted about vain things, and in the meantime neglecting to do that, and closely and inseparably, as fully satisfied with it, to adhere unto it, which their own proper constitution did require. And here thou must remember that thy carriage in every business must be according to the worth and due proportion of it, for so shalt thou not easily be tired out and vexed if thou shalt not dwell upon small matters longer than is fitting. Thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle, and its life will not get any shorter. Happiness doesn't diminish when you share it. Do not judge your neighbor until you walk two moons in his moccasins. Respect yourself and others will respect you, Confucius. Things hardest to bear are sweetest to remember. Life can only be understood backward, but it must be lived forwards. Meditation is not a way of making your mind quiet. It is a way of entering into the quiet that is already there. Deepak Chopra For every dissolution is either a mere dispersion of the elements into those elements again whereof everything did consist, or a change of that which is more solid into earth and of that which is pure and subtile or spiritual into air, so that by this means nothing is lost, but all resumed again into those rational generative seeds of the universe. And this universe, either after a certain period of time to lie consumed by fire, or by continual changes to be renewed, and so forever to endure, now that solid and spiritual that we speak of Thou must not conceive it to be that very same which at first was when thou wert born. For alas, all this that now thou art in either kind, either for matter of substance or of life, hath but two or three days ago, partly from meats eaten and partly from air breathed in, received all its influx, being the same then in no other respect than a running river, maintained by the perpetual influx and new supply of waters, is the same that therefore which thou hast since received, not that which came from thy mother, is that which comes to change and corruption. But suppose that that for the general substance and more solid part of it should still cleave unto thee never so close, yet what is that to the proper qualities and affections of it by which persons are distinguished, which certainly are quite different? Life is a boxing game. Defeat is not declared when you fall down. It is declared when you refuse to get up. Success is the result of hard work and the ability to apply knowledge. First, ask yourself who you want to be, and then do what you have to do. Epictetus Learn to say no. Don't explain. Your friends do not need it, and your enemies will not believe you. The only way that you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have to suffer to grow. David Goggins Herein doth consist happiness of life, for a man to know thoroughly the true nature of everything, what is the matter and what is the form of it, with all his heart and soul, ever to do that which is just, and to speak the truth. What then remaineth but to enjoy thy life in a course and coherence of good actions, one upon another immediately succeeding and never interrupted, though for never so little a while? 
Stop letting other people take advantage of you. Learn to say no and understand your rights. It's easy to hate and it's difficult to love. The person who follows reason in all things will have both leisure and a readiness to act. They are at once both cheerful and self-composed. Marcus Aurelius Do not think you are destined to live forever. You are mortal and your time is limited. Use it wisely. The hardest part is at the beginning of the journey. The rocket loses 90% of its fuel during takeoff. The only thing that exists is the awareness in which everything appears. Nisargadatta Maharaja Either the gods can do nothing for us at all, or they can still and allay all the distractions and distempers of thy mind. If they can do nothing, why dost thou pray? If they can, why wouldst not thou rather pray that they will grant unto thee that thou mayst neither fear nor lust after any of those worldly things which cause these distractions and distempers of it? Why not rather that thou mayst not at either their absence or presence be grieved and discontented than either that thou mayest obtain them or that thou mayest avoid them. For certainly it must needs be that if the gods can help us in anything, they may in this kind also. But thou wilt say perchance, in those things the gods have given me my liberty, and it is in mine own power to do what I will. But if thou mayst use this liberty, rather to set thy mind at true liberty than willfully with baseness and servility of mind to effect those things which either to compass or to avoid is not in thy power wert not thou better and as for the gods who hath told thee that they may not help us up even in those things that they have put in our own power whether it be so or no thou shalt soon perceive if thou wilt but try thyself and pray one prayeth that he may compass his desire to lie with such or such a one, pray thou that thou mayest not lust to lie with her. Another, how he may be rid of such a one, pray thou that thou mayest so patiently bear with him, as that thou have no such need to be rid of him. Another, that he may not lose his child, pray thou that thou mayest not fear to lose him. To this end and purpose, let all thy prayer be, and see what will be the event. The calmer you are, the clearer you think. You can tell more about a person by what he says about others than you can by what others say about him. Love is born into every human being. It calls back the halves of our original nature together. It tries to make one out of two and heal the wound of human nature. Plato, the Symposium. Be careful what you tolerate. You are teaching people how to treat you. Don't let anyone know what you're doing until it's done. Your past does not equal your future. Tony Robbins Out of Plato He then whose mind is endowed with true magnanimity who hath accustomed himself to the contemplation both of all times and of all things in general can this mortal life thinkest thou seem any great matter unto him It is not possible answered he then neither will such a one account death a grievous thing, by no means. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. We 
we live only now. Everything else is either past or is unknown. Life, if well lived, is long enough, Seneca. Temperance is the first step of virtue, which is the beginning of moral perfection. Sometimes, which choice you make is not as important as making a choice and committing to it. Without a sense of urgency, desire loses its value. Jim Rohn Certain miscellaneous matters. As bad tragic actors cannot sing alone but in company with many, so some persons cannot walk about alone. Man, if you are anything, both walk alone and talk to yourself, and do not hide yourself in the chorus. Examine a little at last, look around, stir yourself up, that you may know who you are. When a man drinks water, or does anything for the sake of practice, whenever there is an opportunity he tells it to all, I drink water. Is it for this that you drink water, for the purpose of drinking water? Man, if it is good for you to drink, drink. But if not, you are acting ridiculously. But if it is good for you and you do drink, say nothing about it to those who are displeased with water drinkers. What then do you wish to please these very men? Of things that are done, some are done with a final purpose, some according to occasion, others with a certain reference to circumstances, others for the purpose of complying with others and some according to a fixed scheme of life. You must root out of men these two things, arrogance and distrust. Arrogance, then, is the opinion that you want nothing, but distrust is the opinion that you cannot be happy when so many circumstances surround you. Arrogance is removed by confutation, and Socrates was the first who practiced this, and that the thing is not impossible inquire and seek. This search will do you no harm, and in a manner this is philosophizing, to seek how it is possible to employ desire and aversion without impediment. I am superior to you, for my father is a man of consular rank. Another says, I have been a tribune, but you have not. If we were horses, would you say, my father was swifter? I have much barley and fodder, or elegant neck ornaments. If then, while you were saying this, I said, Be it so, let us run then. Well, is there nothing in a man such as running in a horse, by which it will he known which is superior and inferior? Is there not modesty, fidelity, justice? Show yourself superior in these, that you may be superior as a man. If you tell me that you can kick violently, I also will say to you that you are proud of that which is the act of an ass. Act like you have been there before. Experience is the teacher of all things. You only lose what you cling to, Buddha. Do not focus on perfection or control. You are not in control of anything, and there is no such thing as perfection. What you think about determines the quality of your mind. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. Les Brown What dost thou desire? To live long? What? To enjoy the operations of a sensitive soul, or of the appetitive faculty? Or wouldst thou grow, and then decrease again? Wouldst thou long be able to talk, to think and reason with thyself? 
which of all these seems unto thee a worthy object of thy desire? Now if of all these thou doest find that they be but little worth in themselves, proceed on unto the last, which is in all things to follow God and reason. But for a man to grieve that by death he shall be deprived of any of these things, is both against God and reason. Why should you feel anger at the world, as if the world would notice? Your direction is more important than your speed. There is no use in getting worked up about things you cannot control. Marcus Aurelius Let that sink in and be in a serious relationship. Love is a trap. When it appears, we see only its light, not its shadows. The more you are able to let go of the past and future, the more you are able to be present. Eckhart Tolle What pain soever thou art in, let this presently come to thy mind, that it is not a thing whereof thou needest to be ashamed, neither is it a thing whereby thy understanding, that hath the government of all, can be made worse. For neither in regard of the substance of it, nor in regard of the end of it, which is to intend the common good, can it alter and corrupt it. This also of Epicurus mayst thou in most pains find some help of, that it is neither intolerable nor eternal. So thou keep thyself to the true bounds and limits of reason, and give not way to opinion. This also thou must consider, that many things there be which oftentimes unsensibly trouble and vex thee, as not armed against them with patience, because they go not ordinarily under the name of pains, which in very deed are of the same nature as pain, as to slumber unquietly, to suffer heat, to want appetite. When therefore any of these things make thee discontented, check thyself with these words, Now hath pain given thee the foil, thy courage hath failed thee. Everything is going to be all right. Maybe not today, but eventually. The best way to respect yourself is to discipline yourself. The person who has conquered their own mind is considered the greatest conqueror. Bhagavad Gita What stands in the way becomes the way. What hurts us is what heals us. Everything is a reflection of the condition of your mind. Eckhart Tolle Repentance is an inward and self-reprehension for the neglect or omission of somewhat that was profitable. Now whatsoever is good is also profitable, and it is the part of an honest virtuous man to set by it and to make reckoning of it accordingly. But never did any honest virtuous man repent of the neglect or omission of any carnal pleasure. No carnal pleasure then is either good or profitable. You can always begin again. Not every sweet root gives birth to sweet grass. True love is born from understanding. Buddha You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Do not let yesterday take up too much of today. To change your world, you must first change your thoughts and feelings. 
Neville Goddard. Why should imprudent, unlearned souls trouble that which is both learned and prudent? And which is that that is so? She that understandeth the beginning and the end, and hath the true knowledge of that rational essence, that passeth through all things subsisting, and through all ages being ever the same, disposing and dispensing, as it were, this universe by certain periods of time. Random wandering will not move you forward. It will instead disappoint and frustrate you and make you anxious and unhappy and hard to get along with. Enjoy every bit of your life to the fullest. True wisdom is to understand the eternal nature of the self and the impermanence of the material world. Bhagavad Gita You have two choices, to control your mind or to let your mind control you. Most powerful is he who has himself in his own power. In true love there is no pride, Thich Nhat Hanh. Through the substance of the universe, as through a torrent pass all particular bodies, being all of the same nature, and all joint workers with the universe itself, as in one of our bodies, so many members among themselves. How many such as Chrysippus, how many such as Socrates, how many such as Epictetus, hath the age of the world long since swallowed up and devoured? Let this, be it either men or businesses, that thou hast occasion to think of, to the end that thy thoughts be not distracted and thy mind too earnestly set upon anything, upon every such occasion presently come to thy mind. Of all my thoughts and cares, one only thing shall be the object, that I myself do nothing which to the proper constitution of man, either in regard of the thing itself, or in regard of the manner, or of the time of doing, is contrary. The time when thou shalt have forgotten all things is at hand, and that time also is at hand, when thou thyself shalt be forgotten by all. Whilst thou art, apply thyself to that especially which unto man as he is a mart, is most proper and agreeable, and that is, for a man even to love them that transgress against him. This shall be, if at the same time that any such thing doth happen, thou call to mind that they are thy kinsmen, that it is through ignorance and against their wills that they sin, and that within a very short while after, both thou and he shall be no more. But above all things, that he hath not done thee any hurt, for that by him thy mind and understanding is not made worse or more vile than it was before. Do what you can with what you have, where you are. Beware of those who come to you with tears in their eyes and a story ready to tell. Happiness does not depend on what you have or who you are. It solely relies on what you think. Buddha Be slow in choosing a friend, slower in changing. Love hurts, friends leave, things go wrong, but remember that life goes on. It's not what happens to you that determines how far you will go in life. It is how you handle what happens to you. Zig Ziglar The man who best knows how to meet external threats makes into one family all the creatures he can, and those he cannot, he at any rate does not treat as aliens, and where he finds even this impossible he avoids all dealings, and so far as is advantageous excludes them from his life. Do not
not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Hold to your true aspirations, no matter what is going on around you. The strength of a nation derives from the integrity of the home, Confucius. Just when the caterpillar thought the world was ending, he turned into... It doesn't matter if you're right. The less you open your heart to others, the more your heart suffers. Deepak Chopra The first and most necessary topic in philosophy concerns putting principles to practical use, such as, we ought not to lie. The second is concerned with demonstrations such as, why is it that we ought not to lie? And the third is concerned with confirming and articulating the first two. For example, why is this a demonstration? For what is a demonstration? What is entailment? What is contradiction? What is truth and what is falsehood? 2. Thus the third topic of study is necessary for the second, and the second is necessary for the first. But the most necessary, the one where we ought to rest, is the first. But we do the opposite. We spend our time on the third topic. Upon this we expend all our efforts, whilst entirely neglecting the first topic. Thus. Whilst at the same time as lying, we are more than ready to explain why it is wrong to lie. Loneliness is the price you pay for growth. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. A single conversation across the table with a wise man is better than ten years' mere study of books. Chinese proverb. No great thing is created suddenly, any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. What we do during our working hours determines what we have. What we do in our leisure hours determines what we are. The wound is the place where the light enters you. Rumi. Remember that you are an actor in a play of such a kind as the playwright chooses. Short, if he wants it short. Long, if he wants it long. If he wants you to play the part of a beggar, play even this part well, and so also for the parts of a disabled person, an administrator, or a private individual. For this is your business, to play well the part you are given, but choosing it belongs to another. There is a healthy amount of distrust to have in everyone. How much more damage anger and grief do than the things that cause them. It is essential that we not respond impulsively. Take a moment before reacting and you will find it easier to maintain control. Epictetus It is not the man who has too little but the man who craves more that is poor. You might regret your speech, but you'll never regret your silence. If you don't get a miracle, become one. Nick Vujicic Give what thou wilt and take away what thou wilt, saith he that is well taught and truly modest, to him that gives and takes away, 
and it is not out of a stout and peremptory resolution that he saith it, but in mere love and humble submission. Hard work doesn't always pay off. Learn to stop in time and understand whether you have turned into a slave. Be wary of the man who urges an action in which he himself incurs no risk. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. Seneca It's okay to just chill. We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Rumi What? Are either Panthea or Pergamus abiding to this day by their master's tombs, or either Chabrias or Diotimus by that of Adrianus? O oh, foolery! For what if they did? Would their masters be sensible of it? Or if sensible, would they be glad of it? Or if glad, were these immortal? Was not it appointed unto them also, both men and women, to become old in time, and then to die? And these once dead, what would become of these former? And when all is done, what is all this for, but for a mere bag of blood and corruption? Forgive your old self, you've changed. Women are meant to be loved, not to be understood. The only thing that is truly good is virtue. Epictetus. This quote captures Stoicism's central tenet that virtue is the sole source of true happiness and fulfillment. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. Don't be afraid to say I don't know and seek knowledge from others. If you can't get a miracle, become one. Nick Vujicic Natural justice is a pledge of reciprocal benefit to prevent one man from harming or being harmed by another. A creation of importance can only be produced when its author isolates himself. It is a child of solitude. There are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle. Plato The truth is, you are either part of the problem or part of the solution. When you stop seeing the world in terms of what you like and what you dislike and see things for what they truly are in themselves, you would find a great deal more peace in your life. Freedom is not about getting rid of anything. It is about being who you are. Muji Those natural desires which entail no pain when unsatisfied, though pursued with an intense effort, are also due to groundless opinion. And it is not because of their own nature they are not got rid of, but because of man's groundless opinions. Better 50% now than 100% never. Be silent for the most part, or if you speak, say only what is necessary in a few words.
The man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The man who does not ask is a fool for life. Confucius Keep your personal life private and not telling everyone everything even when you have a lot to say is top tier self-care. Change yourself. That is the only thing you can influence. You are the universe experiencing itself, Alan Watts. Of him that brought me up, not to be fondly addicted to either of the two great factions of the courses in the circus, called Prasini and Venity, nor in the amphitheater partially to favor any of the gladiators or fencers, as either the Parmulari or the Secutores. Moreover, to endure labor, nor to need many things, when I have anything to do, to do it myself rather than by others, not to meddle with many businesses, and not easily to admit of any slander. Never limit your view of life by any past experience. Have enough courage to start and enough heart to finish. Be not afraid of growing slowly. Be afraid only of standing still. Chinese proverb. Don't allow your mind to tell your heart what to do. The mind gives up easily. Just because you can't see the point behind a challenging time doesn't mean there isn't one. No valid plans for the future can be made by those who have no capacity for living now. Alan Watts As for unreasonable creatures then, they had not long been, but presently begun among them swarms and flocks and broods of young ones and a kind of mutual love and affection. For though but unreasonable, yet a kind of soul these had, and therefore was that natural desire of union more strong and intense in them, as in creatures of a more excellent nature, than either in plants or stones or trees. But among reasonable creatures, begun commonwealths, friendships, families, public meetings, and even in their wars, conventions and truces. Now among them that were yet of a more excellent nature, as the stars and planets, though by their nature far distant one from another, yet even among them began some mutual correspondency and unity. So proper is it to excellency in a high degree to affect unity, as that even in things so far distant it could operate unto a mutual sympathy. But now behold, what is now come to pass. Those creatures that are reasonable are now the only creatures that have forgotten their natural affection and inclination of one towards another. Among them alone of all other things that are of one kind, there is not to be found a general disposition to flow together. But though they fly from nature, yet are they stopped in their course and apprehended. Do they what they can, nature doth prevail, and so shalt thou confess if thou dost observe it. For sooner mayest thou find a thing earthly, where no earthly thing is, than find a man that naturally can live by himself alone. Time always exposes what you truly mean to someone. Even the finest sword plunged into salt water will eventually rust. Progress is impossible without change. No amount of anxiety makes any difference to anything that is going to happen. Alan Watts Hope, in reality, is the worst of all evils because it prolongs the torments of man.
If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Your goals are the roadmaps that guide you and show you what is possible for your life. Les Brown Straight of itself, not made straight. It's the possibility of having a dream come true that makes life interesting. There is only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, the fear of failure. It is the power of the mind to be unconquerable, Seneca. Who brings you the most peace should get the most time. In the end, you'll be much happier. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Carl Jung As one who is altogether governed by nature, let it be thy care to observe what it is that thy nature in general doth require. That done, if thou find not that thy nature, as thou art a living sensible creature, will be the worse for it, thou mayest proceed. Next then thou must examine what thy nature as thou art a living sensible creature doth require, and that whatsoever it be thou mayest admit of and do it, if thy nature as thou art a reasonable living creature, will not be the worse for it. Now whatsoever is reasonable is also sociable. Keep thyself to these rules, and trouble not thyself about idle things. Just because it's a bad phase of your life right now, doesn't mean you will never smile again. If what you have seems insufficient to you, then though you possess the world, you will yet be miserable. Happiness is not by chance, but by choice. Jim Rohn It is in the treatment of trifles that a person shows what they are. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Forgive others, not because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Jay Shetty In the country of the Quadi at Granua, these betimes in the morning say to thyself, this day I shall have to do with an idle, curious man, with an unthankful man, a railer, a crafty, false, or an envious man, an unsociable, uncharitable man. All these ill qualities have happened unto them through ignorance of that which is truly good and truly bad. But I that understand the nature of that which is good, that it only is to be desired, and of that which is bad, that it only is truly odious and shameful, who know, moreover, that this transgressor, whosoever he be, is my kinsman, not by the same blood and seed, but by participation of the same reason and of the same divine particle. How can I either be hurt by any of those, since it is not in their power to make me incur anything that is truly reproachful or angry and ill-affected towards him, who by nature is so near unto me? For we are all born to be fellow workers, as the feet, the hands, and the eyelids, as the rows of the upper and under teeth. For such, therefore, to be in opposition is against nature. And what is it to chafe at and to be averse from, but to be in opposition? Forget them. The ones who ask the most from you are the ones who do the least for you.
People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. The strength of a nation derives from the integrity of the home, Confucius. Loneliness isn't the absence of people, it's the absence of connection. Seek meaningful interactions, not just company. You don't want everybody as a friend anyway. One of the best uses of your time is to increase your competence in your key result areas. Brian Tracy Let not things future trouble thee, for if necessity so require that they come to pass, thou shalt, whensoever that is, be provided for them with the same reason by which whatsoever is now present is made both tolerable and acceptable unto thee. All things are linked and knitted together, and the knot is sacred. Neither is there anything in the world that is not kind and natural in regard of any other thing, or that hath not some kind of reference and natural correspondence with whatsoever is in the world besides. For all things are ranked together, and by that decency of its due place and order that each particular doth observe, they all concur together to the making of one and the same cosmos or world, as if you said, a comely piece, or an orderly composition. For all things throughout, there is but one and the same order, and through all things, one and the same God, the same substance and the same law. There is one common reason and one common truth that belongs unto all reasonable creatures. For neither is there save one perfection of all creatures that are of the same kind and partakers of the same reason. It is indeed very hard to move on. But once you do, you'll realize it was your best decision. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. It's easier to do a job right than to explain why you didn't. Martin Van Buren If you get up in the morning, remember what you promised yourself at night. Close some doors, not because of pride, incapacity, or arrogance, but simply because they no longer lead somewhere. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. If you put yourself in a position where you have to stretch outside your comfort zone, then you are forced to expand your consciousness. Les Brown Certain miscellaneous matters. There are certain penalties fixed as by law for those who disobey the divine administration. Whoever thinks any other thing to be good except those things which depend on the will, let him envy, let him desire, let him flatter, let him be perturbed. Whoever considers anything else to be evil, let him grieve, let him lament, let him weep, let him be unhappy. And yet, though so severely punished, we cannot desist. Remember what the poet says about the stranger. Stranger, I must not, e'en if a worse man come. This then may be applied even to a father. I must not, even if a worse man than you should come, treat a father unworthily. For all are from paternal Zeus. And of a brother, for all are from the Zeus who presides over kindred. And so in the other relations of life we shall find Zeus to be an inspector. 
he that can have patience can have what he will. Do not be emotionally attached to anyone. People change. Even your best friends may probably turn into strangers one day. Happiness does not depend on what you have or who you are. It solely relies on what you think. Buddha Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you are done. Stop comparing yourself with those who started 10 years before you. Focus on your own journey. You are awesome just the way you are, Nick Vujicic. Not only now henceforth to have a common breath or to hold correspondency of breath with that air that compasseth us about, but to have a common mind or to hold correspondency of mind also with that rational substance which compasseth all things. For that also is of itself and of its own nature, if a man can but draw it in as he should, everywhere diffused, and passeth through all things, no less than the air doth, if a man can but suck it in. Life is a race against time, so have a good time. Move with strategy, not emotion. Knowledge is virtue. Plato. This quote emphasizes the central role of knowledge in achieving moral perfection and a just society. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Be yourself. People don't have to like you, and you don't have to care. Greatness pulls mediocrity into the mud. Get out there and get after it. David Goggins We all work to one effect, some willingly, and with a rational apprehension of what we do, others without any such knowledge. As I think Heraclitus in a place speaketh of them that sleep, that even they do work in their kind and do confer to the general operations of the world. One man therefore doth co-operate after one sort, and another after another sort. But even he that doth murmur, and to his power doth resist and hinder, even he, as much as any, doth co-operate. For of such also did the world stand in need. Now do thou consider among which of these thou wilt rank thyself, for as for him who is the administrator of all, he will make good use of thee whether thou wilt or no, and make thee, as a part and member of the whole, so to cooperate with him, that whatsoever thou doest shall turn to the furtherance of his own counsels and resolutions. But be not thou for shame such a part of the whole as that vile and ridiculous verse which Chrysippus in a place doth mention is a part of the comedy. Keep your eyes wide open before marriage, half shut afterwards. If you don't value your time, neither will others. The fool's life is empty of gratitude and full of fears. Its course lies wholly toward the future. Epicurus When a person spends all of his time in foreign travel, he ends by having many acquaintances, but no friends. Keep busy. It's the cheapest kind of medicine there is on this earth, and one of the best.
Everything you want is on the other side of fear. Jack Canfield There never was such a thing as absolute justice, but only agreements made in mutual dealings among men in whatever places at various times, providing against the infliction or suffering of harm. How many things would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? Embrace the storm of your life. To know oneself, one should assert oneself. Albert Camus Surround yourself with people who talk about visions and ideas, not people. If the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Les Brown. Book 3, Chapter 22 About Cynicism When one of his pupils inquired of Epictetus and he was a person who appeared to be inclined to cynicism, what kind of person a cynic ought to be, and what was the notion of the thing? We will inquire, said Epictetus, at leisure. But I have so much to say to you that he who without God attempts so great a matter is hateful to God, and has no other purpose than to act indecently in public. For in any well-managed house no man comes forward and says to himself, I ought to be manager of the house. If he does so, the master turns round and, seeing him insolently giving orders, drags him forth and flogs him. So it is also in this great city, for here also there is a master of the house who orders everything. You are the sun. You can, by going round, make the year and seasons and make the fruits grow and nourish them, and stir the winds and make them remit and warm the bodies of men properly. Go, travel round and so administer things from the greatest to the least. You are a calf. When a lion shall appear, do your proper business. If you do not, you will suffer. You are a bull. Advance and fight, for this is your business and becomes you, and you can do it. You can lead the army against Ilium. Be Agamemnon. You can fight in single combat against Hector. Be Achilles. But if Thersites came forward and claimed the command, he would either not have obtained it, or if he did obtain it, he would have disgraced himself before many witnesses. Do you also think about the matter carefully? It is not what it seems to you. I wear a cloak now, and I shall wear it then. I sleep hard now, and I shall sleep hard then. I will take in addition a little bag now and a staff and I will go about and begin to beg and to abuse those whom I meet. And if I see any man plucking the hair out of his body, I will rebuke him. Or if he has dressed his hair, or if he walks about in purple. If you imagine the thing to be such as this, keep far away from it. Do not approach it. It is not at all for you. But if you imagine it to be what it is, and do not think yourself to be unfit for it, consider what a great thing you undertake. In the first place in the things which relate to yourself, you must not be in any respect like what you do now. You must not blame God or man. You must take away desire altogether. You must transfer avoidance only to the things which are within the power of the will. You must not feel anger, nor resentment, nor envy, nor pity. A girl must not appear handsome to you, nor must you love a little reputation, nor be pleased with a boy or a cake, for you ought to know that the rest of men throw walls around them and houses and darkness when they do any such things, and they have many means of concealment. 
A man shuts the door, he sets somebody before the chamber. If a person comes, say that he is out, he is not at leisure. But the cynic, instead of all these things, must use modesty as his protection. If he does not, he will he indecent in his nakedness and under the open sky. This is his house, his door. This is the slave before his bedchamber. This is his darkness. For he ought not to wish to hide anything that he does. And if he does, he is gone. He has lost the character of a cynic, of a man who lives under the open sky, of a free man. He has begun to fear some external thing. He has begun to have need of concealment, nor can he get concealment when he chooses. For where shall he hide himself and how? And if by chance this public instructor shall be detected, this pedagogue, what kind of things will he be compelled to suffer? When then a man fears these things, is it possible for him to be bold with his whole soul to superintend men? It cannot be. It is impossible. In the first place, then, you must make your ruling faculty pure, and this mode of life also. Now, to me the matter to work on is my understanding, as wood is to the carpenter, as hides to the shoemaker. And my business is the right use of appearances. But the body is nothing to me. The parts of it are nothing to me. Death, let it come when it chooses, either death of the whole or of a part. Fly, you say, and whither? Can any man eject me out of the world? He cannot. But wherever I ever I go, there is the sun, there is the moon, there are the stars, dreams, omens, and the conversation with gods. Then, if he is thus prepared, the true cynic cannot be satisfied with this, but he must know that he has sent a messenger from Zeus to men about good and bad things, to show them that they have wandered and are seeking the substance of good and evil where it is not. But where it is, they never think, and that he is a spy. As Diogenes was carried off to Philip after the battle of Cherenea as a spy. For in fact, a cynic is a spy of the things which are good for men and which are evil. And it is his duty to examine carefully and to come and report truly. And not to be struck with terror so as to point out as enemies those who are not enemies nor in any other way to be perturbed by appearances, nor confounded. It is his duty then to he able with a loud voice, if the occasion should arise, and appearing on the tragic stage to say like Socrates, Men, whither are you hurrying? What are you doing, wretches? Like blind people you are wandering up and down. You are going by another road and have left the true road. You seek for prosperity and happiness where they are not. And if another shows you where they are, you do not believe him. Why do you seek it without? In the body? It is not there. If you doubt, look at Myro. Look at Ophelius. In possessions? It is not there. But if you do not believe me, look at Croesus. Look at those who are now rich. With what lamentations their life is filled. In power, it is not there. If it is, those must be happy who have been twice and thrice consuls, but they are not. Whom shall we believe in these matters? You who from without see their affairs and are dazzled by an appearance, or the men themselves? What do they say? Hear them when they groan, when they grieve when on account of these very consulships and glory and splendor they think that they are more wretched and in greater danger? Is it in royal power? It is not. If it were, Nero would have been happy in Sardanapalus, but neither was Agamemnon happy, though he was a better man than Sardanapalus and Nero. But while others are snoring, what is he doing? Much from his head he tore his rooted hair, and what does he say himself? I am perplexed, he says, and disturbed I am, and my heart out of my bosom is leaping. Wretch, which of your affairs goes badly? Your possessions? No. Your body? No. 
but you are rich in gold and copper. What then is the matter with you? That part of you, whatever it is, has been neglected by you and is corrupted. The part with which we desire, with which we avoid, with which we move toward and move from things. How neglected? He knows not the nature of good for which he is made by nature and the nature of evil. And what is his own and what belongs to another? And when anything that belongs to others goes badly, he says, Woe to me, for the Hellenes are in dancer. Wretched is his ruling faculty, and alone neglected and uncared for. The Hellenes are going to die destroyed by the Trojans. And if the Trojans do not kill them, will they not die? Yes, but not all at once. What difference then does it make? For if death is an evil, whether men die altogether, or if they die singly, it is equally an evil. Is anything else then going to happen than the separation of the soul and the body? Nothing. And if the Hellenes perish, is the door closed? And is it not in your power to die? It is. Why then do you lament, O oh, you who are a king and have the scepter of Zeus? An unhappy king does not exist more than an unhappy god. What then art thou? In truth, a shepherd. For you weep as shepherds do when a wolf has carried off one of their sheep. And these who are governed by you are sheep. And why did you come hither? Was your desire in any danger? Was your aversion? Was your movement? Was your avoidance of things? He replies, no. But the wife of my brother was carried off. Was it not then a great gain to be deprived of an adulterous wife? Shall we be despised then by the Trojans? What kind of people are the Trojans, wise or foolish? If they are wise, why do you fight with them? If they are fools, why do you care about them? In what then is the good since it is not in these things? Tell us, you who are Lord, messenger and spy, where you do not think that it is, nor choose to seek it. For if you chose to seek it, you would have found it to he in yourselves. Nor would you be wandering out of the way, nor seeking what belongs to others as if it were your own. Turn your thoughts into yourselves. Observe the preconceptions which you have. What kind of a thing do you imagine the good to be? That which flows easily, that which is happy, that which is not impeded. Come, and do you not naturally imagine it to be great? Do you not imagine it to be valuable? Do you not imagine it to be free from harm? In what material then ought you to seek for that which flows easily, for that which is not impeded, in that which serves or in that which is free, in that which is free? Do you possess the body then free? Or is it in servile condition? We do not know. Do you not know that it is the slave of fever, of gout, ophthalmia, dysentery, of a tyrant, of fire, of iron, of everything which is stronger? Yes, it is a slave. How then is it possible that anything which belongs to the body can be free from hindrance? And how is a thing great or valuable which is naturally dead, or earth, or mud, well then, do you possess nothing which is free? Perhaps nothing. People change. Love hurts. Friends leave. Things go wrong. But remember that life goes on. Never let anyone make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Buddha If nobody helps you, do it alone. It is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not weakness. That is life. Giving connects two people, the giver and the receiver. 
and this connection gives birth to a new sense of belonging. Deepak Chopra of the use of sophistical arguments and hypothetical and the like. The handling of sophistical and hypothetical arguments and of those which derive their conclusions from questioning and in a word the handling of all such arguments relates to the duties of life though the many do not know this truth. For in every matter we inquire how the wise and good man shall discover the proper path and the proper method of dealing with the matter. Let then people either say that the grave man will not descend into the contest of question and answer, or that, if he does descend into the contest, he will take no care about not conducting himself rashly or carelessly in questioning and answering. But if they do not allow either the one or the other of these things, they must admit that some inquiry ought to be made into those topics on which particularly questioning and answering are employed. For what is the end proposed in reasoning? To establish true propositions, to remove the false, to withhold assent from those which are not plain. Is it enough then to have learned only this? It is enough, a man may reply. Is it then also enough for a man who would not make a mistake in the use of coined money to have heard this precept, that he should receive the genuine drachmae and reject the spurious? It is not enough. What then ought to be added to this precept? What else than the faculty which proves and distinguishes the genuine and the spurious drachmae? Consequently, also in reasoning, what has been said is not enough. But is it necessary that a man should acquire the faculty of examining and distinguishing the true and the false, and that which is not plain? It is necessary. Besides this, what is proposed in reasoning? That you should accept what follows from that which you have properly granted. Well, is it then enough in this case also to know this? It is not enough. But a man must learn how one thing is a consequence of other things. And when one thing follows from one thing, and when it follows from several collectively. Consider then if it be not necessary that this power should also be acquired by him who purposes to conduct himself skillfully in reasoning. The power of demonstrating himself the several things which he has proposed and the power of understanding the demonstrations of others, including of not being deceived by sophists, as if they were demonstrating. Therefore there has arisen among us the practice and exercise of conclusive arguments and figures, and it has been shown to be necessary. But in fact, in some cases, we have properly granted the premises or assumptions, and there results from them something and though it is not true, yet nonetheless it does result. What then ought I to do? Ought I to admit the falsehood? And how is that possible? Well, should I say that I did not properly grant that which we agreed upon? But you are not allowed to do even this. Shall I then say that the consequence does not arise through what has been conceded? But neither is it allowed. What then must be done in this case? Consider if it is not this. As to have borrowed is not enough to make a man still a debtor. But to this must be added the fact that he continues to owe the money and that the debt is not paid. So it is not enough to compel you to admit the inference that you have granted the premises, but you must abide by what you have granted. Indeed, if the premises continue to the end, such as they were when they were granted, it is absolutely necessary for us to abide by what we have granted, and we must accept their consequences. But if the premises do not remain such as they were when they were granted, it is absolutely necessary for us also to withdraw from what we granted, and from accepting what does not follow from the words in which our concessions were made. For the inference is now not our inference, 
nor does it result with our assent, since we have withdrawn from the premises which we granted. We ought then both to examine such kind of premises, and such change and variation of them, by which in the course of questioning or answering, or in making the syllogistic conclusion, or in any other such way, the premises undergo variations, and give occasion to the foolish to be confounded, if they do not see what conclusions are. For what reason ought we to examine, in order that we may not in this matter be employed in an improper manner, nor in a confused way, and the same in hypotheses and hypothetical arguments. For it is necessary sometimes to demand the granting of some hypothesis as a kind of passage to the argument which follows. Must we then allow every hypothesis that is proposed, or not allow every one? And if not every one, which should we allow? And if a man has allowed an hypothesis, must he in every case abide by allowing it? Or must he sometimes withdraw from it, but admit the consequences and not admit contradictions? Yes, but suppose that a man says, if you admit the hypothesis of a possibility, I will draw you to an impossibility. With such a person shall a man of sense refuse to enter into a contest and avoid discussion and conversation with him. But what other man than the man of sense can use argumentation and is skillful in questioning and answering and incapable of being cheated and deceived by false reasoning? And shall he enter into the contest and yet not take care whether he shall engage in argument not rashly and not carelessly. And if he does not take care, how can he be such a man as we conceive him to be? But without some such exercise and preparation, can he maintain a continuous and consistent argument? Let them show this, and all these speculations become superfluous, and are absurd and inconsistent with our notion of a good and serious man. Why are we still indolent and negligent and sluggish? And why do we seek pretenses for not laboring and not being watchful in cultivating our reason? If then I shall make a mistake in these matters, may I not have killed my father? Slave, where was there a father in this matter that you could kill him? What then have you done? The only fault that was possible here is the fault which you have committed. This is the very remark which I made to Rufus when he blamed me for not having discovered the one thing omitted in a certain syllogism. I suppose, I said, that I have burnt the capital. Slave, he replied, was the thing omitted here the capital? Or are these the only crimes to burn the capital and to kill your father? but for a man to use the appearances resented to him rashly and foolishly and carelessly, not to understand argument, nor demonstration, nor sophism, nor, in a word, to see in questioning and answering what is consistent with that which we have granted or is not consistent. Is there no error in this? Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path, and leave a trail. When you stop chasing the wrong things, the right ones catch up. Death is not the worst that can happen to men. Plato. Don't die until you're done. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Your soul takes on the color of your thoughts. With everything that has happened to you, you can either feel sorry for yourself or treat what has happened as a gift. Everything is either an opportunity to grow or an obstacle to keep you from growing. You get to choose. Wayne Dyer Do not be troubled by thoughts such as these. I will be valued by no one my whole life long, a nobody everywhere. For if lacking value is something bad, which it is, 
You cannot be involved in anything bad through other people any more than you can be involved in anything disgraceful. Is it any business of yours then to acquire status or to be invited to a banquet? Certainly not. How then can this be regarded as lacking value? And how will you be a nobody everywhere when all you have to be is a somebody concerning those things that are in your power? with respect to which you can be someone of the greatest value. 2. But my friends, you say, will lack support. What do you mean, lack support? Certainly they won't get much cash from you, neither will you make them Roman citizens. Who told you then that these things are amongst those that are in our power, and not the business of other people? And who can give to others things they do not have themselves? 3. Get some money then, someone says, so that we can have some too. If I can get it whilst also preserving my self-respect, my trustworthiness, my magnanimity, show me how, and I will get it. But if you ask me to forsake those things that are good, and my own, in order that you may acquire those things that are not good, see for yourself how unfair and thoughtless you are. Besides, what would you rather have, money, or a friend who is trustworthy and has self-respect? Therefore help me towards this end, and do not ask me to do anything by which I will lose those very qualities. 4. But my country, you say, as far as it depends on me, will be without my help. The Handbook of Epictetus 7, Revised, 2003, 10-10 I ask again, what help do you mean? It will not have colonnades and bathhouses on your account. But what does that mean? For neither is it provided with shoes by a smith, nor weapons by a shoemaker. It is enough if everyone properly attends to their own business. But if you were to provide it with another trustworthy citizen who has self-respect, would that not be of use to your country? Yes. Well then, you also cannot be useless to it. 5. What place then? you ask, will I have in the community that which you may have whilst also preserving your trustworthiness and self-respect? But if by wishing to be useful, you throw away these qualities, of what use can you be to your community if you become shameless and untrustworthy? Nothing costs so much in life as illness and ignoring an illness. To be angry is to take revenge on oneself for the mistakes of others. We can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. Plato He who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. Better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. The challenges in our lives are there to strengthen our convictions. They are not there to run us over. Nick Vujicic Against those who readily come to the profession of sophists, they who have taken up bare theorems immediately wish to vomit them forth, as persons whose stomach is diseased do with food. First digest the thing, then do not vomit it up thus. If you do not digest it, the thing become truly an emetic, a crude food and unfit to eat. But after digestion show us some chance in your ruling faculty, as athletes show in their shoulders by what they have been exercised and what they have eaten as those who have taken up certain arts show by what they have learned. The carpenter does not come and say, hear me talk about the carpenter's art, but having undertaken to build a house, he makes it and proves that he knows the art. You also ought to do something of the kind, eat like a man, drink like a man, dress, marry, beget children, 
do the office of a citizen, endure abuse, bear unreasonable brother, bear with your father, bear with your son, neighbor, compassion. Show us these things that we may see that you have in truth learned something from the philosophers. You say, no, but come and hear me read commentaries. Go away and seek somebody to vomit them on. And indeed, I will expound to you the writings of Chrysippus as no other man can. I will explain his text most clearly. I will add also, if I can, the vehemence of Antipater and Archidemus. Is it then for this that young men shall leave their country and their parents, that they may come to this place and hear you explain words? Ought they not to return with a capacity to endure, to be active in association with others, free from passions, free from perturbation, with such a provision for the journey of life with which they shall be able to bear well the things that happen and derive honor from them? And how can you give them any of these things which you do not possess? Have you done from the beginning anything else than employ yourself about the resolution of syllogisms, of sophistical arguments, and in those which work by questions? But such a man has a school. Why should not I also have a school? These things are not done man in a careless way, nor just as it may happen. But there must be a fit age and life and God as a guide. You say no. But no man sails from a port without having sacrificed to the gods and invoked their help. Nor do men sow without having called on Demeter. And shall a man who has undertaken so great a work undertake it safely without the gods? And shall they who undertake this work come to it with success? What else are you doing, man, than divulging the mysteries? You say, there is a temple at Eleusis and one here also. There is an hierophant at Eleusis, and I also will make an hierophant. There is a herald, and I will establish a herald. There is a torchbearer at Eleusis, and I also will establish a torchbearer. There are torches at Eleusis, and I will have torches here. The words are the same. How do the things done here differ from those done there? Most impious man, is there no difference? These things are done both in due place and in due time. And when accompanied with sacrifice and prayers, when a man is first purified, and when he is disposed in his mind to the thought that he is going to approach sacred rites and ancient rites. In this way the mysteries are useful. In this way we come to the notion that all these things were established by the ancients for the instruction and correction of life. But you publish and divulge them out of time, out of place, without sacrifices, without purity. You have not the garments which the Hierophant ought to have, nor the hair, nor the headdress, nor the voice, nor the age, nor have you purified yourself as he has. But you have committed to memory the words only, and you say, sacred are the words by themselves. You ought to approach these matters in another way. The thing is great. It is mystical, not a common thing, nor is it given to every man. But not even wisdom perhaps is enough to enable a man to take care of youths. A man must have also a certain readiness and fitness for this purpose and a certain quality of body. And above all things, he must have God to advise him to occupy this office as God advised Socrates to occupy the place of one who confutes error, Diogenes, the office of royalty and reproof, and the office of teaching precepts. But you open a doctor's shop, though you have nothing except physic. But where and how they should be applied you know not, nor have you taken any trouble about it. See, that man says, I too have salves for the eyes. Have you also the power of using them? Do you know both when and how they will do good and to whom they will do good? Why then do you act at hazard in things of the greatest importance? Why are you careless? Why do you undertake a thing that is in no way fit for you? 
leave it to those who are able to do it, and to do it well. Do not yourself bring disgrace on philosophy through your own acts, and be not one of those who load it with a bad reputation. But if theorems please you, sit still and turn them over by yourself. But never say that you are a philosopher, nor allow another to say it. But say, he is mistaken, for neither are my desires different from what they were before, nor is my activity directed to other objects, nor do I assent to other things, nor in the use of appearances have I altered at all from my former condition. This you must think and say about yourself, if you would think as you ought. If not, act at hazard and do what you are doing, for it becomes you. Never hit it at all if it is honorably possible to avoid hitting, but never hit soft. Turn your wounds into wisdom. Novus Ordo Seclorum, New Order of the Ages, Virgil. The best view comes after the hardest climb. A man who is as wise as a serpent can afford to be as harmless as a dove. The self is the ultimate truth. Everything else is illusion. Nisargadatta Maharaj On no occasion call yourself a philosopher and do not talk a great deal amongst uneducated people about philosophical principles, but do what follows from those principles. For example, at a banquet do not talk about how people ought to eat, but eat as someone should. Remember how Socrates had so completely eliminated ostentation that people would come to him wanting him to introduce them to philosophers and he would take them off to other philosophers. So little did he care about being overlooked. 2. And if a discussion about philosophical principles should arise in uneducated people, keep silent for the most part for there is great danger that you will immediately vomit up what you have not yet digested. And when someone says to you that you know nothing, and you are not offended, then know that you have begun your work. For sheep do not present their fodder to the shepherd to show how much they have eaten, but they digest their food within to produce wool and milk on the outside. So do not display your philosophical principles to uneducated people but show them the actions that result from the principles when you digest them. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Quietly work, let success speak up. Don't watch the clock, do what it does, keep going. Sam Levinson Choose your friends wisely. When a defining moment comes along, you can do one of two things. Define the moment or let the moment define you. The state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of the state of your mind. Wayne Dyer Spend not the remnant of thy days in thoughts and fancies concerning other men, when it is not in relation to some common good, when by it thou art hindered from some other better work. That is, Spend not thy time in thinking what such a man doth, and to what end, what he saith, and what he thinks, and what he is about, and such other things or curiosities, which make a man to rove and wander from the care and observation of that part of himself which is rational and overruling.
See therefore in the whole series and connection of thy thoughts that thou be careful to prevent whatsoever is idle and impertinent, but especially whatsoever is curious and malicious, and thou must use thyself to think only of such things, of which if a man upon a sudden should ask thee what it is that thou art now thinking, thou mayest answer this and that freely and boldly, that so by thy thoughts it may presently appear that in all thee is sincere and peaceable, as becometh one that is made for society, and regards not pleasures, nor gives way to any voluptuous imaginations at all, free from all contentiousness, envy, and suspicion, and from whatsoever else thou wouldest blush to confess thy thoughts were set upon. He that is such, is he surely that doth not put off to lay hold on that which is best indeed, a very priest and minister of the gods, well acquainted and in good correspondence with him, especially that is seated and placed within himself, as in a temple and sacrary, to whom also he keeps and preserves himself unspotted by pleasure, undaunted by pain, free from any manner of wrong, or contumely, by himself offered unto himself, not capable of any evil from others, a wrestler of the best sort, and for the highest prize, that he may not be cast down by any passion or affection of his own, deeply dyed and drenched in righteousness, embracing and accepting with his whole heart whatsoever either happeneth or is allotted unto him. One of the greatest discoveries a person makes, one of their great surprises, is to find they can do what they were afraid they couldn't do. Focus your attention on creating the life you want, instead of distracting yourself from your current life. To understand everything is to forgive everything. Buddha Winners focus on winning. Losers focus on winners. Worry doesn't take away tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. To earn more, you must learn more. Brian Tracy A man must not only consider how daily his life wasteth and decreaseth, but this also, that if he live long, he cannot be certain whether his understanding shall continue so able and sufficient for either discreet consideration in matter of businesses or for contemplation, it being the thing whereon true knowledge of things both divine and human doth depend. For if once he shall begin to dote, his respiration, nutrition, his imaginative and appetitive and other natural faculties may still continue the same, he shall find no want of them. But how to make that right use of himself that he should, how to observe exactly in all things that which is right and just, how to redress and rectify all wrong, or sudden apprehensions and imaginations, and even of this particular, whether he should live any longer or no, to consider duly, for all such things, wherein the best strength and vigor of the mind is most requisite, his power and ability will be past and gone. Thou must hasten, therefore, not only because thou art every day nearer unto death than other, but also because that intellective faculty in thee, whereby thou art enabled to know the true nature of things, and to order all thy actions by that knowledge, doth daily waste and decay, or may fail thee before thou die. A man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks he becomes. If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Ralph Waldo Emerson Just because you're happy, 
it doesn't mean you should keep your mouth shut. Mastery of reading and writing requires a master, still more so life. Smile, breathe, and go slowly. Thich Nhat Hanh. Such and such things, from such and such causes, must of necessity proceed. He that would not have such things to happen, is as he that would have the fig tree grow without any sap or moisture. In sum, remember this, that within a very little while, both thou and he shall both be dead, and after a little while more, not so much as your names and memories shall be remaining. Have patience. All things are difficult before they become easy. Live in reality as it is, not as you wish it was. A disciplined mind brings happiness. Buddha. The best way to respect yourself is to discipline yourself. Stop comparing yourself with those who started 10 years before you. Focus on your own journey. You can never earn in the outside world more than you earn in your own mind. Brian Tracy This may ever be my comfort and security. My understanding that ruleth over all will not of itself bring trouble and vexation upon itself. This I say, it will not put itself in any fear, it will not lead itself into any concupiscence. If it be in the power of any other to compel it to fear or to grieve, it is free for him to use his power. But sure if itself do not of itself, through some false opinion or supposition, incline itself to any such disposition, there is no fear. For as for the body, why should I make the grief of my body to be the grief of my mind? If that itself can either fear or complain, let it. But as for the soul, which indeed can only be truly sensible of either fear or grief, to which only it belongs according to its different imaginations and opinions, to admit of either of these or of their contraries, thou mayst look to that thyself, that it suffer nothing, induce her not to any such opinion or persuasion. The understanding is of itself sufficient unto itself, and needs not, if itself doth not bring itself to need, any other thing besides itself, and by consequent as it needs nothing, so neither can it be troubled or hindered by anything, if itself doth not trouble and hinder itself. The heart that shares is the heart that's full. It is indeed very hard to move on, but once you do, you'll realize it was your best decision. It is in the character of very few men to honor without envy a friend who has prospered. Aeschylus It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. A person who doesn't make mistakes doesn't make anything at all. The truth cannot be taught. It can only be realized. Muji Let this be thy only joy, and thy only comfort. From one sociable kind action without intermission to pass unto another, God being ever in thy mind. There was never a bad peace or a good war.
If a man knows not to which port he sails, no wind is favorable. Well begun is half done, Aristotle. The more you like yourself, the less you'll need others. As is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. If you can control your emotions, you can control your world. Jocko Willink To a certain rhetorician who was going up to Rome on a suit, when a certain person came to him who was going up to Rome on account of a suit which had regard to his rank, Epictetus inquired the reason of his going to Rome, and the man then asked what he thought about the matter. Epictetus replied, If you ask me what you will do in Rome, whether you will succeed or fall, I have no rule about this. But if you ask me how you will fare, I can tell you. If you have right opinions, you will fare well. If they are false, you will fare ill. For to every man the cause of his acting is opinion. For what is the reason why you desired to be elected governor of the Nasians? Your opinion. What is the reason that you are now going up to Rome? Your opinion. And going in winter and with danger and expense. I must go. What tells you this? Your opinion. Then if opinions are the causes of all actions and a man has bad opinions, such as the cause may be, such also is the effect. Have we then all sound opinions, both you and your adversary? And how do you differ? But have you sounder opinions than your adversary? Why? You think so. And so does he think that his opinions are better. And so do madmen. This is a bad criterion. But show to me that you have made some inquiry into your opinions, and have taken some pains about them. And as now, you are sailing to Rome in order to become governor of the Canossians, and you are not content to stay at home with the honors which you had, but you desire something greater and more conspicuous. So when did you ever make a voyage for the purpose of examining your own opinions and casting them out, if you have any that are bad? Whom have you approached for this purpose? What time have you fixed for it? What age? Go over the times of your life by yourself, if you are ashamed of me. When you were a boy, did you examine your own opinions? And did you not then, as you do all things now, do as you did do? And when you were become a youth and attended the rhetoricians, and yourself practiced rhetoric, what did you imagine that you were deficient in? And when you were a young man and engaged in public matters, and pleaded causes yourself, and were gaining reputation, who then seemed your equal? And when would you have submitted to any man examining and show that your opinions are bad? What then do you wish me to say to you? Help me in this matter. I have no theorem, rule, for this. Nor have you, if you came to me for this purpose, come to me as a philosopher, but as to a seller of vegetables or a shoemaker. For what purpose then have philosophers' theorems? For this purpose, that whatever may happen, our ruling faculty may be and continue to be conformable to nature. Does this seem to you a small thing? No, but the greatest. What then? Does it need only a short time? And is it possible to seize it as you pass by? If you can, seize it. Then you will say, I met with Epictetus as I should meet with a stone or a statue. For you saw me and nothing more. But he meets with a man as a man who learns his opinions, and in his turn, shows his own. Learn my opinions, show me yours, and then say that you have visited me. Let us examine one another. If I have any bad opinion, take it away. If you have any, show it. This is the meaning of meeting with a philosopher. 
Not so, but this is only a passing visit. And while we are hiring the vessel, we can also see Epictetus. Let us see what he says. Then you go away and say, Epictetus was nothing. He used solecisms and spoke in a barbarous way. For of what else do you come as judges? Well, but a man may say to me, If I attend to such matters, I shall have no land, as you have none. I shall have no silver cups, as you have none, nor fine beasts, as you have none. In answer to this, it is perhaps sufficient to say, I have no need of such things. But if you possess many things, you have need of others. Whether you choose or not, you are poorer than I am. What then have I need of? Of that which you have not, of firmness, of a mind which is conformable to nature, of being free from perturbation. Whether I have a patron or not, what is that to me? But it is something to you. I am richer than you. I am not anxious what Caesar will think of me. For this reason I flatter no man. This is what I possess instead of vessels of silver and gold. You have utensils of gold, but your discourse, your opinions, your assents, your movements, your desires are of earthenware. But when I have these things conformable to nature, why should I not employ my studies also upon reason? For I have leisure, my mind is not distracted. What shall I do since I have no distraction? What more suitable to a man have I than this? When you have nothing to do, you are disturbed, you go to the theater or you wander about without a purpose. Why should not the philosopher labor to improve his reason? You employ yourself about crystal vessels. I employ myself about the syllogism named the living. You about marine vessels. I employ myself about the syllogism named the denying. To you everything appears small that you possess. To me all that I have appears great. Your desire is insatiable. Mine is satisfied. To children who put their hand into a narrow-necked earthen vessel and bring out figs and nuts, this happens. If they fill the hand, they cannot take it out, and then they cry. Drop a few of them, and you will draw things out. And do you part with your desires? Do not desire many things, and you will have what you want. There are only three events in a man's life. Birth, life, and death. He is not conscious of being born. He dies in pain, and he forgets to live. Time is your most valuable resource. There are no refunds or second chances for the time you waste. Faber est suae quisque fortunae. Every man is the artisan of his own fortune. Appius Claudius Cicus. Except that some folks love to point fingers and blame others. You will be blamed for things you haven't done and for things that haven't even happened yet. Only those who have a why to live can bear almost anything. When you really want something, and you couple that with an understanding of why it is possible, and your willingness to do whatever it takes to make it happen, you will succeed. Jack Canfield When we say then that pleasure is the end and aim, we do not mean the pleasures of the prodigal or the pleasures of sensuality, as we are understood to do by some through ignorance, prejudice, or willful misrepresentation. By pleasure we mean the absence of pain in the body and of trouble in the soul. It is not an unbroken succession of drinking bouts and of revelry, not sexual lust, not the enjoyment of the fish and other delicacies of a luxurious table, which produce a pleasant life. It is sober reasoning, searching out the grounds of every choice and avoidance, 
and banishing those beliefs through which the greatest tumults take possession of the soul. Of all this, the beginning and the greatest good is wisdom. Therefore, wisdom is a more precious thing even than philosophy. From it spring all the other virtues, for it teaches that we cannot live pleasantly without living wisely, honorably, and justly, nor live wisely, honorably, and justly without living pleasantly. For the virtues have grown into one with a pleasant life, and a pleasant life is inseparable from them. Who then is superior in your judgment to such a man? He holds a holy belief concerning the gods, and is altogether free from the fear of death. He has diligently considered the end fixed by nature, and understands how easily the limit of good things can be reached and attained, and how either the duration or the intensity of evils is but slight. Fate, which some introduce as sovereign over all things, he scorns, affirming rather that some things happen of necessity, others by chance, others through our own agency. For he sees that necessity destroys responsibility and that chance is inconstant, whereas our own actions are autonomous, and it is to them that praise and blame naturally attach. It were better indeed to accept the legends of the gods than to bow beneath that yoke of destiny which the natural philosophers have imposed. The one holds out some faint hope that we may escape if we honor the gods, while the necessity of the naturalists is deaf to all entreaties. Nor does he hold chance to be a god, as the world in general does, for in the acts of a god there is no disorder, nor to be a cause, though an uncertain one, for he believes that no good or evil is dispensed by chance to men so as to make life happy, though it supplies the starting point of great good and great evil. He believes that the misfortune of the wise is better than the prosperity of the fool. It is better, in short, that what is well judged in action should not owe its successful issue to the aid of chance. Exercise yourself in these and related precepts day and night both by yourself and with one who is like-minded, then never, either in waking or in dream, will you be disturbed, but will live as a god among men. For man loses all semblance of mortality by living in the midst of immortal blessings. It is better to have $480 in a wallet that costs $20 than to have $20 in a wallet that costs $480. Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Buddha The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. Do your best and trust the process. Your reputation is your most valuable asset. Protect it at all costs. Alex Hormozzi That the deity oversees all things. When a person asked him how a man could be convinced that all his actions are under the inspection of God, he answered, Do you not think that all things are united in one? I do, the person replied. Well, do you not think that earthly things have a natural agreement and union with heavenly things? I do. And how else so regularly as if by God's command, when he bids the plants to flower, do they flower? When he bids them to send forth shoots, do they shoot? When he bids them to produce fruit, how else do they produce fruit? When he bids the fruit to ripen, does it ripen? When again he bids them to cast down the fruits, how else do they cast them down? And when to shed the leaves, do they shed the leaves? And when he bids them to fold themselves up and to remain quiet and rest, how else do they remain quiet and rest? 
and how else at the growth and the wane of the moon and at the approach and recession of the sun are so great an alteration and change to the contrary seen in earthly things. But our plants and our bodies so bound up and united with the whole and are not our souls much more and our souls so bound up and in contact with God as parts of Him and portions of Him. And does not God perceive every motion of these parts as being His own motion connate with Himself? Now are you able to think of the divine administration, and about all things divine, and at the same time also about human affairs, and to be moved by ten thousand things at the same time in your senses and in your understanding? and to assent to some and to dissent from others, and again as to some things to suspend your judgment. And do you retain in your soul so many impressions from so many and various things, and being moved by them, do you fall upon notions similar to those first impressed, and do you retain numerous arts and the memories of ten thousand things? And is not God able to oversee all things, and to be present with all, and to receive from all a certain communication? And is the sun able to illuminate so large a part of the all, and to leave so little not illuminated, that part only which is occupied by the earth's shadow? And he who made the sun itself and makes it go round, being a small part of himself compared with the whole, cannot he perceive all things? But I cannot, the man may reply comprehend all these things at once. But who tells you that you have equal power with Zeus? Nevertheless, he has placed by every man a guardian, every man's demon, to whom he has committed the care of the man, a guardian who never sleeps, is never deceived. For to what better and more careful guardian could he have entrusted each of us? When, then, you have shut the doors and made darkness within, Remember never to say that you are alone, for you are not. But God is within, and your demon is within. And what need have they of light to see what you are doing? To this God you ought to swear an oath, just as the soldiers do to Caesar. But they who are hired for pay swear to regard the safety of Caesar before all things. And you who have received so many and such great favors, will you not swear? Or when you have sworn, will you not abide by your oath? And what shall you swear? Never to be disobedient, never to make any charges, never to find fault with anything that he has given, and never unwillingly to do or to suffer anything that is necessary. Is this oath like the soldier's oath? The soldiers swear not to prefer any man to Caesar. In this oath men swear to honor themselves before all. What is life? It is a flash of a firefly in the night. It is a breath of a buffalo in the winter time. It is as the little shadow that runs across the grass and loses itself in the sunset. When we love, we always strive to become better than we are. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. He who has renounced all desires and acts only for the welfare of others without any expectation of reward is the greatest of all. Bhagavad Gita It's easy to hate and it's difficult to love. Nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. The moment you accept and assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the universe must conform. Neville Goddard What portion soever, either of air or fire, there be in thee, although by nature it tend upwards, submitting nevertheless to the ordinance of the universe, it abides here below in this mixed body. So whatsoever is in thee, 
either earthy or humid, although by nature it tend downwards, yet is it against its nature both raised upwards and standing or consistent? So obedient are even the elements themselves to the universe, abiding patiently wheresoever, though against their nature, they are placed until the sound, as it were, of their retreat and separation. Is it not a grievous thing, then, that thy reasonable part only should be disobedient and should not endure to keep its place? Yea, though it be nothing enjoined that is contrary unto it, but that only which is according to its nature. For we cannot say of it when it is disobedient, as we say of the fire or air, that it tends upwards towards its proper element, for then goes it the quite contrary way. For the motion of the mind to any injustice, or incontinency, or to sorrow, or to fear, is nothing else but a separation from nature. Also when the mind is grieved for anything that has happened by the divine providence, then doth it likewise forsake its own place, for it was ordained unto holiness and godliness, which specially consist in an humble submission to God and his providence in all things as well as unto justice, these also being part of those duties which as naturally sociable we are bound unto, and without which we cannot happily converse one with another, yea, in the very ground and fountain indeed of all just actions. Life is too short to waste time hating anyone. Life is a succession of lessons that must be lived to be understood. One who has conquered himself is greater than one who has conquered a thousand men in battle. Bhagavad Gita There is only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, the fear of failure. Surround yourself with people who inspire you to become even better. The self is not a thing or an object. It is the essence of all things. Muji I am formed by nature for my own good. I am not formed for my own evil. What then is the discipline for this purpose? First of all the highest and the principal, and that which stands as it were the entrance is this. When you are delighted with anything, be delighted as with a thing which is not one of those which cannot be taken away, but as with something of such a kind as an earthen pot is, or a glass cup that, when it has been broken, you may remember what it was and may not be troubled. So in this matter also, if you kiss your own child or your brother or friend, never give full license to the appearance and allow not your pleasure to go as far as it chooses, but check it and curb it as those who stand behind men in their triumphs and remind them that they are mortal. Do you also remind yourself in like manner that he whom you love is mortal and that what you love is nothing of your own. It has been given to you for the present, not that it should not be taken from you, nor has it been given to you for all time, but as a fig is given to you or a bunch of grapes at the appointed season of the year. But if you wish for these things in winter, you are a fool. So if you wish for your son or friend, when it is not allowed to you, you must know that you are wishing for a fig in winter. For such as winter is to a fig, such is every event which happens from the universe to the things which are taken away according to its nature. And further, at the times when you are delighted with a thing, place before yourself the contrary appearances. What harm is it while you are kissing your child to say with a lisping voice, Tomorrow you will die, and to a friend also. Tomorrow you will go away, or I shall, and never shall we see one another again. 
but these are words of bad omen, and some incantations also are of bad omen. But because they are useful, I don't care for this, only let them be useful. But do you call things to be of bad omen except those which are significant of some evil? Cowardice is a word of bad omen, and meanness of spirit, and sorrow, and grief, and shamelessness. These words are of bad omen, and yet we ought not to hesitate to utter them in order to protect ourselves against the things. Do you tell me that a name which is significant of any natural thing is of evil omen? Say that even for the ears of corn to be reaped is of bad omen, for it signifies the destruction of the ears but not of the world. Say that the falling of the leaves also is of bad omen, and for the dried fig to take the place of the green fig, and for raisins to be made from the grapes. For all these things are changes from a former state into other states, not a destruction, but a certain fixed economy and administration. Such is going away from home and a small change. Such is death, a greater change, not from the state which now is to that which is not, but to that which is not now. Shall I then no longer exist? You will not exist, but you be something else of which the world now has need. For you also came into existence not when you chose, but when the world had need of you. Wherefore the wise and good man, remembering who he is and whence he came, and by whom he was produced, is attentive only to this, how he may fill his place with due regularity and obediently to God. Dost thou still wish me to exist? I will continue to exist as free, as noble in nature, as thou hast wished me to exist. For thou hast made me free from hindrance in that which is my own. But hast thou no further need of me? I thank thee, and so far I have remained for thy sake, and for the sake of no other person. And now in obedience to thee I depart. How dost thou depart? Again I say, as thou hast pleased, as free as thy servant, as one who has known thy commands and thy prohibitions, and so long as I shall stay in thy service, whom dost thou will me to be? A prince or a private man, a senator or a common person, a soldier or a general, a teacher or a master of a family? Whatever place and position thou mayest assign to me, as Socrates says, I will die ten thousand times rather than desert them. And where dost thou will me to be? In Rome, or Athens, or Thebes, or Giara? Only remember me there where I am. If thou sendest me to a place where there are no means for men living according to nature, I shall not depart in disobedience to thee. But as if thou wast giving me the signal to retreat, I do not leave thee. Let this be too from my intention, but perceive that thou hast no need of me. If means of living according to nature be allowed me, I will seek no other place than that in which I am, or other men than those among whom I am. Let these thoughts be ready to hand by night and by day. These you should write, these you should read, about these you should talk to yourself and to others. Ask a man, can you help me at all for this purpose? And further, go to another and to another. Then if anything that is said he, contrary to your wish, this reflection first will immediately relieve you, that it is not unexpected. For it is a great thing in all cases to say, I knew that I begot a son who is mortal. For so you also will say, I knew that I am mortal. I knew that I may leave my home. I knew that I may be ejected from it. I knew that I may be led to prison. Then if you turn round and look to yourself and seek the place from which comes that which has happened, you will forthwith recollect that it comes from the place of things which are out of the power of the will and of things which are not my own. What then is it to me? Then you will ask, and this is the chief thing, and who is it that sent it? The leader or the general, the state? 
the law of the state. Give it me then, for I must always obey the law in everything. Then, when the appearance pains you, for it is not in your power to prevent this, contend against it by the aid of reason, conquer it. Do not allow it to gain strength nor to lead you to the consequences by raising images such as it pleases and as it pleases. If you be in Giara, do not imagine the mode of living at Rome and how many pleasures there were for him who lived there and how many there would be for him who returned to Rome. But fix your mind on this matter, how a man who lives in Giara ought to live in Giara like a man of courage. And if you be in Rome, do not imagine what the life in Athens is, but think only of the life in Rome. Then in the place of all other delights substitute this, that of being conscious that you are obeying God, that not in word but in deed, you are performing the acts of a wise and good man. For what a thing it is for a man to be able to say to himself, Now, whatever the rest may say in solemn manner in the schools, and may be judged to be saying in a way contrary to common opinion, This I am doing, and they are sitting and are discoursing of my virtues and inquiring about me and praising me, and of this Zeus has willed that I shall receive from myself a demonstration, and shall myself know if he has a soldier such as he ought to have, a citizen such as he ought to have, and if he has chosen to produce me to the rest of mankind as a witness of the things which are independent of the will. See that you fear without reason, that you foolishly desire what you do desire. Seek not the good in things external. Seek it in yourselves. If you do not, you will not find it. For this purpose he leads me at one time hither, at another time sends me thither, shows me to men as poor, without authority and sick, sends me to Giara, leads me into prison, not because he hates me, far from him be such a meaning, for who hates the best of his servants, nor yet because he cares not for me, for he does not neglect any even of the smallest things. But he does this for the purpose of exercising me and making use of me as a witness to others. Being appointed to such a service, do I still care about the place in which I am, or with whom I am, or what men say about me? And do I not entirely direct my thoughts to God and to his instructions and commands? Having these things always in hand and exercising them by yourself and keeping them in readiness, you will never be in want of one to comfort you and strengthen you. For it is not shameful to be without something to eat but not to have reason sufficient for keeping away fear and sorrow. But if once you have gained exemption from sorrow and fear, will there any longer be a tyrant for you, or a tyrant's guard, or attendance on Caesar? Or shall any appointment to offices at court cause you pain? Or shall those who sacrifice in the capital, on the occasion of being named to certain functions, cause pain to you who have received so great authority from Zeus? Only do not make a proud display of it, nor boast of it, but show it by your acts. And if no man perceives it, be satisfied that you are yourself in a healthy state and happy. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but none about his or her own. Rich people avoid two things in life, stupid company and stupid spending. The journey is the reward, Chinese proverb. You don't have to feel good about it. You just have to keep going. The feeling will pass, but you will remain. The stronger people are not those who show strength in front of us, but those who fight battles we know nothing about. If you can't get a miracle, become one. 
Nick Vujicic. What is the nature of the good? God is beneficial, but the good also is beneficial. It is consistent then that where the nature of God is, there also the nature of the good should be. What then is the nature of God? Flesh? Certainly not. An estate in land? By no means. Fame? No. Is it intelligence, knowledge, right reason? Yes. Herein then simply seek the nature of the good. For I suppose that you do not seek it in a plant. No. Do you seek it in an irrational animal? No. If then you seek it in a rational animal, why do you still seek it anywhere except in the superiority of rational over irrational animals? Now plants have not even the power of using appearances and for this reason you do not apply the term good to them. The good then requires the use of appearances. Does it require this use only? For if you say that it requires this use only, say that the good and that happiness and unhappiness are in irrational animals also. But you do not say this, and you do right. For if they possess even in the highest degree the use of appearances, yet they have not the faculty of understanding the use of appearances. And there is good reason for this, for they exist for the purpose of serving others, and they exercise no superiority. For the ass, I suppose, does not exist for any superiority over others? No, but because we had need of a back which is able to bear something, and in truth we had need also of his being able to walk. And for this reason he received also the faculty of making use of appearances, for otherwise he would not have been able to walk. And here then the matter stopped, for if he had also received the faculty of comprehending the use of appearances, it is plain that consistently with reason he would not then have been subjected to us, nor would he have done us these services, but he would have been equal to us and like to us. Will you not then seek the nature of good in the rational animal? For if it is not there, you not choose to say that it exists in any other thing. What then? Are not plants and animals also the works of God? They are but they are not superior things, nor yet parts of the gods. But you are a superior thing. You are a portion separated from the deity. You have in yourself a certain portion of him. Why then are you ignorant of your own noble descent? Why do you not know whence you came? Will you not remember when you are eating, who you are, who eat, and whom you feed? When you are in conjunction with a woman, will you not remember who you are, who do this thing? when you are in social intercourse, when you are exercising yourself, when you are engaged in discussion, know you not that you are nourishing a God, that you are exercising a God? Wretch, you are carrying about a God with you, and you know it not. Do you think that I mean some God of silver or of gold and external? You carry him within yourself, and you perceive not that you are polluting him by impure thoughts and dirty deeds. And if an image of God were present, you would not dare to do any of the things which you are doing. But when God himself is present within and sees all and hears all, you are not ashamed of thinking such things and doing such things, ignorant as you are of your own nature and subject to the anger of God. Then why do we fear when we are sending a young man from the school into active life, lest he should do anything improperly, eat improperly, have improper intercourse with women, and lest the rags in which he is wrapped should debase him, lest fine garments should make him proud? This youth does not know his own God. He knows not with whom he sets out. But can we endure when he says, I wish I had you with me. Have you not God with you? And do you seek for any other when you have him? Or will God tell you anything else than this? If you were a statue of Phidias, either Athena or Zeus, you would think broth of yourself and of the artist. And if you had any understanding, you would try to do nothing unworthy of him 
who made you or of yourself, and try not to appear in an unbecoming dress to those who look on you. But now because Zeus has made you, for this reason do you care not how you shall appear? And yet, is the artist like the artist in the other? Or the work in the one case like the other? And what work of an artist, for instance, has in itself the faculties which the artist shows in making it? Is it not marble or bronze or gold or ivory? And the Athena of Phidias, when she has once extended the hand and received in it the figure of victory, stands in that attitude forever. But the works of God have power of motion. They breathe. They have the faculty of using the appearances of things and the power of examining them. Being the work of such an artist, do you dishonor him? And what shall I say? Not only that he made you, but also entrusted you to yourself and made you a deposit to yourself. Will you not think of this too? But do you also dishonor your guardianship? But if God had entrusted an orphan to you, would you thus neglect him? He has delivered yourself to your care and says, I had no one fitter to entrust him to than yourself. Keep him for me, such as he is by nature, modest, faithful, erect, unterrified, free from passion and perturbation. And then you do not keep him such. But some will say, Whence has this fellow got the arrogance which he displays and these supercilious looks? I have not yet so much gravity as befits a philosopher, for I do not yet feel confidence in what I have learned and what I have assented to. I still fear my own weakness. Let me get confidence and the you shall see a countenance such as I ought to have and an attitude such as I ought to have. Then I will show to you the statue when it is perfected, when it is polished. What do you expect? A supercilious countenance? Does the Zeus at Olympia lift up his brow? No, his look is fixed as becomes him who is ready to say, Irrevocable is my word and shall not fail. Such will I show myself to you, faithful, modest, noble, free from perturbation. What, an immortal too, exempt from old age and from sickness? No, but dying as becomes a god, sickening as becomes a god. This power I possess. This I can do, but the rest I do not possess, nor can I do. I will show the nerves of a philosopher. What nerves are these? A desire never disappointed, an aversion which never falls on that which it would avoid, a proper pursuit, a diligent purpose, an assent which is not rash. These you shall see. Do not envy other people's good qualities, but instill them in yourself through admiration. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are, it is our choices. Everything that has been born shall be born again, and nothing that has died shall ever perish. Plato. This statement explores Plato's concept of the soul's immortality and its cyclical journey through life and death. It offers a sense of hope and continuity. All we are is the result of all we have thought. People change. Love hurts. Friends leave, things go wrong, but remember that life goes on. Your ability to set goals and to make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success. Brian Tracy Think thyself fit and worthy to speak or to do anything that is according to nature, and let not the reproach or report of some that may ensue upon it ever deter thee. If it be right and honest to be spoken or done, undervalue not thyself so much as to be discouraged from it, 
As for them, they have their own rational overruling part, and their own proper inclination, which thou must not stand and look about to take notice of, but go on straight, whither both thine own particular and the common nature do lead thee, and the way of both these is but one. You lose them both. Trusting blindly often leads to betrayal. Good actions give strength to ourselves and inspire good actions in others. This quote emphasizes the ripple effect of our actions, both positive and negative, and encourages us to strive for virtuous behavior for the benefit of ourselves and others. While we wait for life, life passes. If you have more than three priorities, you have none. The difference between those who succeed and those who fail is not the presence of fear, but how they respond to it. Alex Hormozzi But you, neglecting, neglecting to do the commands of the general, complain when anything more hard than usual is imposed on you, and you do not observe what you make the army become as far as it is in your power, that if all imitate you, no man will dig a trench, no man will put a rampart round, nor keep watch, nor expose himself to danger, but will appear to be useless for the purposes of an army. Again, in a vessel, if you go as a sailor, keep to one place and stick to it. And if you are ordered to climb the mast, refuse. If to run to the head of the ship, refuse. And what master of a ship will endure you? And will he not pitch you overboard as a useless thing, an impediment only and bad example to the other sailors? And so it is here also. Every man's life is a kind of warfare and it is long and diversified. You must observe the duty of a soldier and do everything at the nod of the general, if it is possible divining what his wishes are. For there is no resemblance between that general and this, neither in strength nor in superiority of character. You are placed in a great office of command and not in any mean place, but you are always a senator. Do you not know that such a man must give little time to the affairs of his household, but be often away from home, either as a governor or one who is governed, or discharging some office, or serving in war, or acting as a judge? Then do you tell me that you wish, as a plant, to be fixed to the same places and to be rooted? Yes, for it is pleasant. Who says that it is not? But a soup is pleasant and a handsome woman is pleasant. What else do those say who make pleasure their end? Do you not see of what men yon have uttered the language? That it is the language of Epicureans and Catamites? Next, while you are doing what they do and holding their opinions, do you speak to us the words of Zeno and of Socrates? Will you not throw away as far as you can the things belonging to others with which you decorate yourself? though they do not fit you at all. For what else do they desire than to sleep without hindrance and free from compulsion? And when they have risen to yawn at their leisure, and to wash the face, then write and read what they choose, and then talk about some trifling matter being praised by their friends, whatever they may say, then to go forth for a walk, and having walked about a little to bathe, and then eat and sleep, such sleep as is the fashion of such men, why need we say how? For one can easily conjecture. Come, do you also tell your own way of passing the time which you desire, you who are an admirer of truth and of Socrates and Diogenes? What do you wish to do in Athens? The same, or something else? Why then do you call yourself a Stoic? Well, but they who falsely call themselves Roman citizens are severely punished. 
and should those who falsely claim so great and reverend a thing and name get off unpunished? Or is this not possible? But the law, divine and strong and inevitable, is this, which exacts the severest punishments from those who commit the greatest crimes? For what does this law say? Let him who pretends to things which do not belong to him be a boaster, a vainglorious man. Let him who disobeys the divine administration be base and a slave. Let him suffer grief, let him be envious, let him pity, and in a word, let him be unhappy and lament. Well then, do you wish me to pay court to a certain person? To go to his doors? If reason requires this to be done for the sake of country, for the sake of kinsmen, for the sake of mankind, why should you not go? You are not ashamed to go to the doors of a shoemaker, when you are in want of shoes, nor to the door of a gardener, when you want lettuces. And are you ashamed to go to the doors of the rich when you want anything? Yes, for I have no awe of a shoemaker. Don't feel any awe of the rich, nor will I flatter the gardener, and do not flatter the rich. How then shall I get what I want? Do I say to you, go as if you were certain to get what you want? And do not I only tell you that you may do what is becoming to yourself? Why then should I still go? That you may have gone, that you may have discharged the duty of a citizen, of a brother, of a friend. And further remember that you have gone to the shoemaker, to the seller of vegetables, who have no power in anything great or noble, though he may sell dear. You go to buy lettuces. They cost an obelisk, but not a talent. So it is here also. The matter is worth going for to the rich man's door. Well, I will go. It is worth talking about. Let it be so. I will talk with him. But you must also kiss his hand and flatter him with praise. Away with that. It is a talent's worth. It is not profitable to me, nor to the state, nor to my friends, to have done that which spoils a good citizen and a friend. But you seem not to have been eager about the matter, if you do not succeed. Have you again forgotten why you went? Know you not that a good man does nothing for the sake of appearance, but for the sake of doing right? What advantage is it, then, to him to have done right? And what advantage is it to a man who writes the name of Dion to write it as he ought? The advantage is to have written it. Is there no reward then? Do you seek a reward for a good man greater than doing what is good and just? At Olympia you wish for nothing more, but it seems to you enough to be crowned at the games. Does it seem to you so small and worthless a thing to be good and happy? For these purposes being introduced by the gods into this city, and it being now your duty to undertake the work of a man, do you still want nurses also, and a mama? And do foolish women by their weeping move you and make you effeminate? Will you thus never cease to be a foolish child? Know you not that he who does the acts of a child, the older he is, the more ridiculous he is, in Athens did you see no one by going to his house? I visited any man that I pleased. Here also be ready to see, and you will see whom you please. Only let it be without meanness, neither with desire nor with aversion, and your affairs will be well managed. But this result does not depend on going nor on standing at the doors, but it depends on what is within, on your opinions when you have learned not to value things which are external and not dependent on the will, and to consider that not one of them is your own, but that these things only are your own, to exercise the judgment well, to form opinions, to move toward an object, to desire, to turn from a thing. Where is there any longer room for flattery, where for meanness? Why do you still long for the quiet there, and for the places to which you are accustomed. 
Wait a little and you will again find these places familiar. Then, if you are of so ignoble a nature, again if you leave these also, weep and lament. How then shall I become of an affectionate temper? By being of a noble disposition and happy. For it is not reasonable to be mean-spirited, nor to lament yourself, nor to depend on another, nor even to blame God or man. I entreat you, become an affectionate person in this way, by observing these rules. But if through this affection, as you name it, you are going to be a slave and wretched, there is no profit in being affectionate. And what prevents you from loving another as a person subject to mortality, as one who may go away from you. Blessed are those who do not fear solitude, who are not afraid of their own company, who are not always desperately looking for something to do, something to amuse themselves with, something to judge. Better days are coming. You won't always wake up in the morning with a heavy heart. I walk slowly, but I never walk backward. Abraham Lincoln When you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. We cry over people. But what about time? Time is also never going to come back. Time is everything, and one day it will define you. Adapt and Overcome, Jocko Willink Of the free will there is no thief or robber out of Epictetus. Whose is this also, that we should find a certain art and method of assenting, and that we should always observe with great care and heed the inclinations of our minds, that they may always be with their due restraint and reservation, always charitable, and according to the true worth of every present object, and as for earnest longing, that we should altogether avoid it, and to use averseness in those things only, that wholly depend of our own wills. It is not about ordinary petty matters, believe it, that all our strife and contention is, but whether with the vulgar we should be mad, or by the help of philosophy wise and sober, said he. Crantutrin. Socrates said, What will you have? The souls of reasonable or unreasonable creatures? Of reasonable. But what? Of those whose reason is sound and perfect? or of those whose reason is vitiated and corrupted, of those whose reason is sound and perfect. Why then labor ye not for such? Because we have them already. What then do ye so strive and contend between you? Don't get bogged down in regrets. No one is perfect. Do not moan, do not complain. Learn to be thick-skinned. As a well-spent day brings happy sleep, a life well-spent brings happy death. Leonardo da Vinci The only constant in life is change. Embrace it, and you'll grow. Focus on improving yourself, not proving yourself. Your true nature is boundless and infinite, beyond all form and limitation. Nisargadatta Maharaj He who is greedy of credit and reputation after his death doth not consider that they themselves by whom he is remembered shall soon after every one of them be dead, and they likewise that succeed those, until at last all memory, which hitherto by the succession of men admiring and soon after dying hath had its course, 
be quite extinct. But suppose that both they that shall remember thee and thy memory with them should be immortal, what is that to thee? I will not say to thee after thou art dead, but even to thee living, what is thy praise? But only for a secret and politic consideration which we call economian or dispensation. For as for that, that it is the gift of nature, whatsoever is commended in thee, what might be objected from thence, let that now that we are upon another consideration be omitted as unseasonable, that which is fair and goodly, whatsoever it be, and in what respect soever it be, that it is fair and goodly, it is so of itself and terminates in itself, not admitting praise as a part or member, that therefore which is praised is not thereby made either better or worse. This I understand even of those things that are commonly called fair and good, as those which are commended either for the matter itself or for curious workmanship. As for that which is truly good, what can it stand in need of more than either justice or truth, or more than either kindness and modesty, which of all those either becomes good or fair, because commended or dispraised suffers any damage? Doth the emerald become worse in itself, or more vile if it be not commended? Doth gold or ivory or purple? Is there anything that doth though never so common as a knife, a flower, or a tree? There is no greater waste of time than justifying your actions to people who have a life you don't want. When we love, we always strive to become better than we are. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. To be prepared for war is one of the most effective means of preserving peace. George Washington Don't let success go to your head. Don't let failure go to your heart. Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason so few engage in it. I'm inviting you to go deeper, to learn and to practice, so that you become someone who has a great capacity for being solid, calm and without fear. Because our society needs people like you, who have these qualities, and your children, our children, need people like you in order to go on in order to become solid and calm and without fear Tich Nhat Han. that we ought not to be disturbed by any news when anything shall be reported to you which is of a nature to disturb have this principle in readiness that the news is about nothing which is within the power of your will. Can any man report to you that you have formed a bad opinion or had a bad desire? By no means. But perhaps he will report that some person is dead. What then is that to you? He may report that some person speaks ill of you. What then is that to you? Or that your father is planning something or other against whom? against your will how can he but is it against your poor body against your little property you are quite safe it is not against you but the judge declares that you have committed an act of impiety and did not the judges make the same declaration against socrates does it concern you that the judge has made this declaration no why then do you trouble yourself any longer about it your father has a certain duty, and if he shall not fulfill it, he loses the character of a father, of a man of natural affection, of gentleness. Do not wish him to lose anything else on this account, for never does a man do wrong in one thing and suffer in another. On the other side, it is your duty to make your defense firmly, modestly, without anger. But if you do not, 
you also lose the character of a son, of a man of modest behavior, of generous character. Well then, is the judge free from danger? No, but he also is in equal danger. Why then are you still afraid of his decision? What have you to do with that which is another man's evil? It is your own evil to make a bad defense. Be on your guard against this only, but to be condemned or not to be condemned, as that is the act of another person, so it is the evil of another person. A certain person threatens you. Me? No. He blames you. Let him see how he manages his own affairs. He is going to condemn you unjustly. He is a wretched man. It has been my observation that most people get ahead during the time that others waste. It is a reflection of your lack of willpower, discipline, and your piss-poor life choices. There is nothing more unbearable than idleness. If you've seen the present, you've seen all things, from time immemorial into all of eternity. For everything that happens is related and the same. Marcus Aurelius One day you will wake up and there won't be any more time to do the things you've always wanted. Do it now. Do not seek, otherwise you will lose. Do not seek, and you will find. A lot of people have gone further than they thought they could because someone else thought they could. Zig Ziglar Once you have adapted your body to plain simple living, do not make a show of it. When you drink water, do not declare on every occasion that you are drinking water. If you want to train yourself to endure hardships, do it by yourself, away from other people. Do not embrace statues, but if you are ever thirsty, take a mouthful of cold water and spit it out without telling anyone. Learning to let go should be learned from learning to get it. What hurts us is what heals us. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Abraham Lincoln Begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. When in doubt, tell the truth. Success is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. Jim Rohn Let the several deaths of men of all sorts and of all sorts of professions and of all sort of nations be a perpetual object of thy thoughts, so that thou mayest even come down to Philistio, Phobus, and Oregonian. Pass now to other generations. Thither shall we, after many changes, where so many brave orators are, where so many grave philosophers, Heraclitus, Pythagoras, Socrates, where so many heroes of the old times, and then so many brave captains of the latter times, and so many kings. After all these, where Eudoxus, Hipparchus, Archimedes, where so many other sharp, generous, industrious, subtile, peremptory dispositions, and among others, even they, that have been the greatest scoffers and deriders of the frailty and brevity of this our human life, as Menippus and others, as many as there have been such as he, of all these consider that they long since are all dead and gone. And what do they suffer by it? Nay, they that have not so much as a name remaining, what are they the worse for it? One thing there is, and that only, which is worth our while in this world, 
and ought by us much to be esteemed, and that is, according to truth and righteousness, meekly and lovingly, to converse with false and unrighteous men. If you're right but you're obnoxious about it, people won't see you as the good guy. Money is a defense to a lot of challenges. The one who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace. Bhagavad Gita Do not put off important medical checkups. There are only two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. The greatest rewards come when you give of yourself. It's about bettering the lives of others, being part of something bigger than yourself, and making a positive difference. Nick Vujicic Stir up thy mind and recall thy wits again from thy natural dreams and visions and when thou art perfectly awoken and canst perceive that they were but dreams that troubled thee as one newly awakened out of another kind of sleep. Look upon these worldly things with the same mind as thou didst upon those that thou sawest in thy sleep. Carry the spirit of the child into old age which means never losing your enthusiasm. Let go and let life strengthen you no matter how much it hurts. Amare et sapere vix deo conceditu. Even a god finds it hard to love and be wise at the same time. Publilius Cyrus. Do not fear getting hurt. You can't grow if you don't hurt. There is no ending to true love. It's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. Jocko Willink You can be invincible if you never enter a contest in which it is not in your power to win. 2. Beware that, when you see someone honored before others, enjoying great power or otherwise highly esteemed, you do not get carried away by the impression and think them happy. For if the essence of good lies in what is in our power, it is wrong to feel envy or jealousy, and you yourself will not wish to be praetor, senator or consul but someone who is free. There is only one way to attain this end, and this is to have no concern for the things that are not in our power. Learn to be sufficient and realize you are immortal. It does not require many words to speak the truth. People are like dirt. They can either nourish you and help you grow as a person, or they can stunt your growth and make you wilt and die. Plato Better days are coming. You won't always wake up in the morning with a heavy heart. The best way to gain self-confidence is to do what you are afraid to do. You don't get paid for the hour. You get paid for the value you bring to the hour. Jim Rohn How everything may he done acceptably to the gods.
When someone asked, How may a man eat acceptably to the gods? He answered, If he can eat justly and contentedly, and with equanimity, and temperately and orderly, will it not be also acceptably to the gods? But when you have asked for warm water and the slave has not heard, or if he did hear has brought only tepid water, or he is not even found to be in the house, then not to be vexed or to burst with passion, is not this acceptable to the gods? How then shall a man endure such persons as this slave? Slave yourself, will you not bear with your own brother, who has Zeus for his progenitor, and is like a son from the same seeds and of the same descent from above? But if you have been put in any such higher place, will you immediately make yourself a tyrant? Will you not remember who you are and whom you rule? That they are kinsmen, that they are brethren by nature, that they are the offspring of Zeus? But I have purchased them, and they have not purchased me. Do you see in what direction you are looking, that it is toward the earth, toward the pit, that it is toward these wretched laws of dead men? but toward the laws of the gods you are not looking. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. Never let the same people disappoint you twice. If you hold anything dear outside of your own reasoned choice, you will have destroyed your capacity for choice. Epictetus Everything outside of this moment is just imagination. Difficulties are meant to rouse, not discourage, the human spirit. It is to grow strong by conflict. No price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself, Friedrich Nietzsche. As a part hitherto thou hast had a particular subsistence, and now shalt thou vanish away into the common substance of him who first begot thee, or rather thou shalt be resumed again into that original rational substance out of which all others have issued, and are propagated. Many small pieces of frankincense are set upon the same altar. One drops first and is consumed, another after, and it comes all to one. Go where you are appreciated, not just tolerated. Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. Six mistakes mankind keeps making century after century, believing that personal gain is made by crushing others, worrying about things that cannot be changed or corrected, insisting that a thing is impossible because we cannot accomplish it refusing to set aside trivial preferences, neglecting development and refinement of the mind, attempting to compel others to believe and live as we do. You can do today. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living or get busy dying. The kingdom of God is available to you in the here and the now. But the question is whether you are available to the kingdom. Our practice is to make ourselves ready for the kingdom so that it can manifest in the here and the now. You don't need to die in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. In fact, you have to be truly alive in order to do so. Tish Nathan To comprehend the whole world together in thy mind, 
and the whole course of this present age to represent it unto thyself, and to fix thy thoughts upon the sudden change of every particular object. How short the time is from the generation of anything unto the dissolution of the same, but how immense and infinite both that which was before the generation and that which after the generation of it shall be. All things that thou seest will soon be perished, and they that see their corruptions will soon vanish away themselves. He that dieth a hundred years old and he that dieth young shall come all to one. If you wish to forget anything on the spot, make a note that this thing is to be remembered. Embrace the storm of your life. If it pleases the gods, so be it. They may well kill me, but they can't hurt me. Plato It is not about having what you want, but wanting what you have. The only person that cares about your hopes and dreams is you. The only person that is going to make them happen is you. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Jim Rohn He that seeth the things that are now hath seen all that either was ever or ever shall be, for all things are of one kind, and all like one unto another. Meditate often upon the connection of all things in the world, and upon the mutual relation that they have one unto another. For all things are after a sort folded and involved one within another, and by these means all agree well together. For one thing is consequent unto another, by local motion, by natural conspiration and agreement, and by substantial union, or reduction of all substances into one. Only time can heal what reason cannot. It is better to make an approximately correct decision than a precise mistake. You cannot prevent the birds of sorrow from flying over your head, but you can prevent them from building nests in your hair. Chinese proverb. Realize you cannot control everything or everyone, but you can control yourself, and that's even better. If you really want to know someone, Look at the five people they talk to the most and spend the most time with. When you make a choice, you change the future. Deepak Chopra A pleasant song or dance. The Pancratius' exercise, sports that thou art wont to be much taken with, thou shalt easily contemn. If the harmonious voice thou shalt divide into so many particular sounds whereof it doth consist, and of every one in particular shall ask thyself, whether this or that sound is it that doth so conquer thee, for thou wilt be ashamed of it, and so for shame, if accordingly thou shalt consider it, every particular motion and posture by itself, and so for the wrestler's exercise too. Generally then, whatsoever it be besides virtue, and those things that proceed from virtue that thou art subject to be much affected with, remember presently thus to divide it, and by this kind of division, in each particular to attain unto the contempt of the whole. This thou must transfer and apply to thy whole life also. Keep to yourself. Stay away from idiots. Stupidity is contagious. Life isn't fair, but it's still good. Love, in its essence, 
is spiritual fire. Seneca. We learn not in school, but in life. In order to love who you are, you cannot hate the experiences that shaped you. When you become aware of silence, immediately there is a stillness and a presence which are not separate from you, but are the essence of who you are. Eckhart Tolle Make it not any longer a matter of dispute or discourse. What are the signs and proprieties of a good man, but really and actually to be such? Free yourself from society's advice. Most of them have no idea of what they're doing. Self-pity is dangerous. Stay away from it. The American, by nature, is optimistic. He is experimental, an inventor, and a builder who builds best when called upon to build greatly. John F. Kennedy If you want to help yourself, carry the spirit of the child into old age, which means never losing your enthusiasm. Self-pity is dangerous. Stay away from it. The only true peace is the peace that comes from within. Papa G. That soul which is ever ready, even now presently, if need be, from the body whether by way of extinction or dispersion or continuation in another place and a state to be separated, how blessed and happy is it. But this readiness of it, it must proceed, not from an obstinate and peremptory resolution of the mind, violently and passionately set upon opposition, as Christians are wont, but from a peculiar judgment, with discretion and gravity, so that others may be persuaded also and drawn to the like example, but without any noise and passionate exclamations. Be like the fountain that overflows, not like the cistern that nearly contains. Winners focus on winning. Losers focus on winners. To conquer oneself is a greater victory than to conquer thousands in a battle. Buddha If someone is trying to bring you down, they are already below you. People want you to succeed, but not more than themselves. It's not what happens to you that determines how far you will go in life. It is how you handle what happens to you. Zig Ziglar Introduction Everyone can benefit from the true meaning and philosophical teachings of Stoicism. Having the ability to choose how you react and respond can alleviate anxious and depressive symptoms. The Stoic way of thinking allows you to thoughtfully process and accept situations while giving you the power to choose how you react, handle, and cope. Stoicism allows you to control what you can and let go of what you cannot. It helps you to choose your attitude, to live in the moment, and make sense of your circumstances. Living a more Stoic life will give you the opportunity to live a mentally healthier, more balanced, and overall happier life. The carefully curated quotations compiled here are wonderful tenets to live by and help illustrate specific lessons to improve yourself. We, the authors, have embarked on this exploration of Stoic philosophy in our writings 
and in our daily professions, where we assist individuals on their journeys of personal growth and recovery. We understand that this odyssey of continued self-education and improvement begins with you. All of us understand that Stoicism is one of the many tools you can use to help quell the suffering, to have a better understanding of yourself and improve your approach to living. He who is cruel to animals becomes hard also in his dealings with men. We can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. Love your neighbor as yourself. The first step, don't be anxious. Nature controls it all. Marcus Aurelius. Carefully consider the negative signs that people give off and immediately disconnect from them. It will save you a lot of pain and more importantly, wasted time. Create and stick to a personal budget. In modern society, most of us don't want to be in touch with ourselves. We want to be in touch with other things like religion, sports, politics, a book. We want to forget ourselves. Anytime we have leisure, we want to invite something else to enter us, opening ourselves to the television and telling the television to come and colonize us. Tishnathan. O oh my soul, the time I trust will be when thou shalt be good, simple, single, more open and visible than that body by which it is enclosed. Thou wilt one day be sensible of their happiness, whose end is love, and their affections dead to all worldly things. Thou shalt one day be full, and in want of no external thing, not seeking pleasure from anything, either living or insensible, that this world can afford, neither wanting time for the continuation of thy pleasure, nor place and opportunity, nor the favor either of the weather or of men when thou shalt have content in thy present estate, and all things present shall add to thy content, when thou shalt persuade thyself that thou hast all things, all for thy good, and all by the providence of the gods, and of things future also shalt be as confident that all will do well, as tending to the maintenance and preservation in some sort of his perfect welfare and happiness, who is perfection of life, of goodness and beauty, who begets all things, and containeth all things in himself, and in himself doth recollect all things from all places that are dissolved, that of them he may beget others again like unto them. Such one day shall be thy disposition, that thou shalt be able, both in regard of the gods, and in regard of men, so to fit and order thy conversation, as neither to complain of them at any time for anything that they do, nor to do anything thyself, for which thou mayest justly be condemned. Many people die at 25 and aren't buried until they are 75. It's best to leave things at the right time, otherwise you are left with too many regrets and complaints. It is impossible for someone to learn what they think they already know. Epictetus. Do yourself a favor, get rich. Life gets easier with money, not time. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. If you don't see yourself as a winner, then you cannot perform as a winner. Zig Ziglar How hast thou carried thyself hitherto towards the gods, towards thy parents, towards thy brethren, towards thy wife, towards thy children, 
towards thy masters, thy foster fathers, thy friends, thy domestics, thy servants? Is it so with thee that hitherto thou hast neither by word or deed wronged any of them? Remember with all through how many things thou hast already passed, and how many thou hast been able to endure, so that now the legend of thy life is full and thy charge is accomplished. Again, how many truly good things have certainly by thee been discerned? How many pleasures, how many pains hast thou passed over with contempt? How many things eternally glorious hast thou despised? Towards how many perverse unreasonable men hast thou carried thyself kindly and discreetly? You don't need to be right all the time. You learn nothing from life if you think you're right all the time. Decision-making like coffee needs a cooling process. The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Confucius You have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. If you would know the value of money, go and try to borrow some. You can only keep what you give away, Alex Hormozzi. There is but one light of the sun, though it be intercepted by walls and mountains, and other thousand objects. There is but one common substance of the whole world, though it be concluded and restrained into several different bodies, in number infinite. There is but one common soul, though divided into innumerable particular essences and natures. So is there but one common intellectual soul, though it seemed to be divided. And as for all other parts of those generals which we have mentioned as either sensitive souls or subjects, these of themselves, as naturally irrational, have no common mutual reference one unto another, though many of them contain a mind or reasonable faculty in them, whereby they are ruled and governed. But of every reasonable mind, this the particular nature, that it hath reference to whatsoever is of her own kind, and desireth to be united, neither can this common affection or mutual unity and correspondency be here intercepted or divided or confined to particulars as those other common things are. Just because you can't see the point behind a challenging time doesn't mean there isn't one. One of my biggest life lessons is that we heal at the speed of our forgiveness. Mortal as I am, I know that I am born for a day. But when I follow at my pleasure the serried multitude of the stars in their circular course, my feet no longer touch the earth. Ptolemy Things are not always completely clear. Be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Your imagination is the gateway to your reality. Neville Goddard To them that ask thee, where hast thou seen the gods, or how knowest thou certainly that there be gods, that thou art so devout in their worship? I answer first of all, that even to the very eye they are in some manner visible and apparent. Secondly, neither have I ever seen mine own soul, and yet I respect and honor it. So then for the gods, 
by the daily experience that I have of their power and providence towards myself and others, I know certainly that they are, and therefore worship them. Make your enemy brave and strong, so that if defeated, I will not be ashamed. Remember, a lot of people don't deserve your time. Be selfish with your time. Vivamus, moriendum est. Let us live, for we must die. Seneca the Younger. The more you give, the more you receive. Beware of sugar that is mixed with poison. Beware of the fly that sat on a dead snake. Your goals are the roadmaps that guide you and show you what is possible for your life. Les Brown. As one that tosseth up a ball, and what is a ball the better, if the motion of it be upwards, or the worse if it be downwards, or if it chance to fall upon the ground, so for the bubble, if it continue, what it the better, and if it dissolve, what is it the worse? and so is it of a candle too. And so must thou reason with thyself, both in matter of fame and in matter of death. For as for the body itself, the subject of death, wouldest thou know the vileness of it? Turn it about that thou mayest behold it the worst sides upwards as well, as in its more ordinary pleasant shape. How doth it look when it is old and withered, when sick and pained, when in the act of lust and fornication? And as for fame, this life is short. Both he that praiseth and he that is praised, he that remembers and he that is remembered, will soon be dust and ashes. Besides, it is but in one corner of this part of the world that thou art praised, and yet in this corner thou hast not the joint praises of all men, no, nor scarce of any one constantly, and yet the whole earth itself, what is it but as one point, in regard of the whole world. People who do not understand your silence will never understand your words. Learn as if you constantly feel you lack knowledge and as if you are constantly afraid of losing your knowledge. To see what is right and not to do it is want of courage. Confucius. Give a man time and he will tell you the truth. In banquets, remember that you entertain two guests, body and soul. And whatever you shall have given to the body you soon eject, but what you shall have given to the soul you keep always. Don't worry about failures. Worry about the chances you miss when you don't even try. Jack Canfield What things we ought to despise and what things we ought to value. The difficulties of all men are about external things. Their helplessness is about externals. What shall I do? How will it be? How will it turn out? Will this happen? Will that? All these are the words of those who are turning themselves to things which are not within the power of the will. For who says, How shall I not assent to that which is false? How shall I not turn away from the truth? If a man be of such a good disposition as to be anxious about these things, I will remind him of this. Why are you anxious? The thing is in your own power. Be assured. Do not be precipitate in assenting before you apply the natural rule. On the other side, if a man is anxious about desire, lest it fail in its purpose and miss its end, and with respect to the avoidance of things, lest he should fall into that which he would avoid, I will first kiss him. 
because he throws away the things about which others are in a flutter and their fears and employs his thoughts about his own affairs and his own condition. Then I shall say to him, If you do not choose to desire that which you will fall to obtain, nor to attempt to avoid that into which you will fall, desire nothing which belongs to others, nor try to avoid any of the things which are not in your power. If you do not observe this rule, you must of necessity fall in your desires and fall into that which you would avoid. What is the difficulty here? Where is there room for the words, how will it be, and how will it turn out, and will this happen or that? Now is not that which will happen independent of the will? Yes, and the nature of good and of evil, is it not in the things which are within the power of the will? Yes. Is it in your power, then, to treat according to nature everything which happens? Can any person hinder you? No, man. No longer then say to me, How will it be? For however it may be, you will dispose of it well, and the result to you will be a fortunate one. What would Hercules have been if he had said, How shall a great lion not appear to me, or a great boar, or savage men? And what do you care for that? If a great boar appear, you will fight a greater fight. If bad men appear, you relieve the earth of the bad. Suppose, then, that I may lose my life in this way. You will die a good man, doing a noble act. For since we must certainly die, of necessity a man must be found doing something, either following the employment of a husbandman, or digging, or trading, or serving in a consulship, or suffering from indigestion, or from diarrhea. What then do you wish to be doing when you are found by death? I, for my part, would wish to be found doing something which belongs to a man, beneficent, suitable to the general interest, noble. But if I cannot be found doing things so great, I would be found doing at least that which I cannot be hindered from doing, that which is permitted me to do, correcting myself, cultivating the faculty which makes use of appearances, laboring at freedom from the affects, rendering to the relations of life their due. If I succeed so far, also touching on the third topic, safety in the forming judgments about things, if death surprises me when I am busy about these things, it is enough for me if I can stretch out my hands to God and say, The means which I have received from Thee for seeing Thy administration and following it, I have not neglected. I have not dishonored Thee by my acts. See how I have used my perceptions. See how I have used my preconceptions. Have I ever blamed Thee? Have I been discontented with anything that happens or wished it to be otherwise? Have I wished to transgress the relations? That Thou hast given me life, I thank Thee for what Thou hast given me. So long as I have used the things which are Thine, I am content. Take them back and place them wherever Thou mayest choose. For Thine were all things Thou gavest them to me. Is it not enough to depart in this state of mind? And what life is better and more becoming than that of a man who is in this state of mind? And what end is more happy? But that this may be done, a man must receive no small things, nor are the things small which he must lose. You cannot both wish to be a consul and to have these things, and to be eager to have lands and these things also and to be solicitous about slaves and about yourself. But if you wish for anything which belongs to another, that which is your own is lost. This is the nature of the thing. Nothing is given or had for nothing. And where is the wonder? If you wish to be a consul, you must keep awake, run about, kiss hands, waste yourself with exhaustion at other men's doors, say and do many things unworthy of a free man, send gifts to many, daily presents to some. And what is the thing that is got? Twelve bundles of rods, to sit three or four times on the tribunal, 
to exhibit the games in the circus and to give suppers in small baskets. Or, if you do not agree about this, let someone show me what there is besides these things. In order, then, to secure freedom from passions, tranquility, to sleep well when you do sleep, to be really awake when you are awake, to fear nothing, to be anxious about nothing. Will you spend nothing and give no labor? But if anything belonging to you be lost while you are thus busied, or be wasted badly, or another obtains what you ought to have obtained, will you immediately be vexed at what has happened? Will you not take into the account on the other side what you receive and for what? How much for how much? Do you expect to have for nothing things so great? And how can you? One work has no community with another. You cannot have both external things after bestowing care on them and your own ruling faculty. But if you would have those, give up this. If you do not, you will have neither this nor that, while you are drawn in different ways to both. The oil will be spilled, the household vessels will perish, but I shall be free from passions. There will be a fire when I am not present, and the books will be destroyed, but I shall treat appearances according to nature. Well, but I shall have nothing to eat. If I am so unlucky, Death is a harbor, and death is the harbor for all. This is the place of refuge, and for this reason not one of the things in life is difficult. As soon as you choose, you are out of the house and are smoked no more. Why then are you anxious? Why do you lose your sleep? Why do you not straightway, after considering wherein your good is and your evil say, both of them are in my power? Neither can any man deprive me of the good, nor involve me in the bad against my will. Why do I not throw myself down and snore? For all that I have is safe. As to the things which belong to others, he will look to them who gets them, as they may be given by him who has the power. Who am I who wish to have them in this way or in that? Is a power of selecting them given to me? Has any person made me the dispenser of them? Those things are enough for me over which I have power. I ought to manage them as well as I can. And all the rest, as the master of them may choose. When a man has these things before his eyes, does he keep awake and turn hither and thither? What would he have or what does he regret, Patroclus or Antilochus or Menelaus? For when did he suppose that any of his friends was immortal? And when had he not before his eyes that on the morrow or the day after he or his friend must die? Yes, he says, but I thought that he would survive me and bring up my son. You were a fool for that reason, and you were thinking of what was uncertain. Why then do you not blame yourself and sit crying like girls? But he used to set my food before me. Because he was alive, you fool. But now he cannot. But Automedon will set it before you. And if Automedon also dies, you will find another. But if the pot in which your meat was cooked should be broken, must you die of hunger? Because you have not the pot which you are accustomed to? Do you not send and buy a new pot? He says, No greater ill could fall on me. Why is this your ill? Do you then, instead of removing it, blame your mother for not foretelling it to you that you might continue grieving from that time? What do you think? Do you not suppose that Homer wrote this that we may learn that those of noblest birth, the strongest and the richest, the most handsome, when they have not the opinions which they ought to have, are not prevented from being most wretched and unfortunate? Never trust a lonely friend because, while some find strength in solitude, others may lose their way in it. In the hopes of reaching the moon, men fail to see the flowers that blossom at their feet.
move the world, we must first move ourselves. Socrates If life were predictable, it would cease to be life and be without flavor. It is not your fault things are the way they are. The purpose of life is the expansion of happiness. Happiness is the goal of every other goal. Deepak Chopra The motion of the mind is not as the motion of a dart. For the mind, when it is wary and cautelous, and by way of diligent circumspection turneth herself many ways, may then as well be said to go straight on to the object, as when it useth no such circumspection. Remember, health is another form of wealth. Take care of your body. If something bothers you, change it. If it is beyond your control, learn to live with it, accept it, change yourself. That is the only thing you can influence. Mastery of reading and writing requires a master, still more so life. Marcus Aurelius You have two choices. Evolve or repeat. Whoever undertaking a business hurries too quickly to achieve a result will do nothing. Be miserable or motivate yourself. Whatever has to be done, it's always your choice. Wayne Dyer All things, saith he, are by certain order and appointment. And what if the elements only? It will suffice to remember that all things in general are by certain order and appointment, or if it be but few. And as concerning death, that either dispersion, or the atoms, or annihilation, or extinction, or translation, will ensue. And as concerning pain, that that which is intolerable is soon ended by death, and that which holds long must needs be tolerable, and that the mind in the meantime, which is all in all, may by way of interclusion or interception, by stopping all manner of commerce and sympathy with the body, still retain its own tranquility. Thy understanding is not made worse by it. As for those parts that suffer, let them, if they can, declare their grief themselves. As for praise and commendation, view their mind and understanding, what a state they are in, what kind of things they fly, and what things they seek after, and that as in the seaside, whatsoever was before to be seen, is by the continual succession of new heaps of sand cast up one upon another, soon hid and covered. So in this life, all former things by those which immediately succeed. It is easy to hate, and it is difficult to love. This is how the whole scheme of things works. All good things are difficult to achieve, and bad things are very easy to get. Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. When you perform your duty without attachment to the results, you are practicing true yoga. Bhagavad Gita Why should you feel anger at the world, as if the world would notice? Do not be so kind, you forgot to be clever, and never be so clever, you forgot to be kind. I'm inviting you to go deeper, to learn and to practice, so that you become someone who has a great capacity for being solid, calm, and without fear. 
because our society needs people like you who have these qualities and your children, our children, need people like you in order to go on, in order to become solid and calm and without fear. Tichnat Han. Thou art now ready to die, and yet hast thou not attained to that perfect simplicity. Thou art yet subject to many troubles and perturbations, not yet free from all fear and suspicion of external accidents, nor yet either so meekly disposed towards all men as thou shouldest, or so affected as one whose only study and only wisdom is to be just in all his actions. Not everyone wants to see you succeed. Some will even go out of their way to see you fail. People who do not understand your silence will never understand your words. He who conquers his passions is master of his own worlds. Hierocles. Not everyone will make it to your future. Some people are passing through to teach you life lessons. What people say about you is a projection of their own reality, not yours. The mind is only a collection of thoughts, but you are the witness of those thoughts. Papaji. As we say commonly, the physician hath prescribed unto this man riding, unto another cold baths, unto a third to go barefoot. So it is alike to say, the nature of the universe hath prescribed unto this man sickness, or blindness, or some loss, or damage, or some such thing. For as there, when we say of a physician, that he hath prescribed anything, our meaning is, that he hath appointed this for that, as subordinate and conducing to health. So here, whatsoever doth happen unto any, is ordained unto him as a thing, subordinate unto the fates, and therefore do we say of such things, that they do simvenin, that is, happen or fall together, as of square stones, when either in walls or pyramids in a certain position they fit one another, and agree, as it were, in an harmony, the masons say, that they do simvenin, as if thou shouldest say, fall together, so that in the general, though the things be diverse that make it, yet the consent or harmony itself is but one. Cherish youth, but trust old age. Start saving your money. Above all things, respect yourself. Pythagoras. When you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive. To think to enjoy, to love. Only he who controls himself is free. If you view all the things that happen to you, both good and bad, as opportunities, then you operate out of a higher level of consciousness, less brown. Use thyself, as often as thou seest any man do anything, presently, if it be possible, to say unto thyself, What is this man's end in this his action? But begin this course with thyself first of all, and diligently examine thyself concerning whatsoever thou doest. Do not trust your money to a person who likes to count other people's money. If all printers were determined not to print anything till they were sure it would offend nobody, there would be very little printed.
Wisdom begins in wonder, Socrates. Every animal with blood in its veins and horns on its head will fight when it is attacked. Do not envy other people's good qualities, but instill them in yourself through admiration. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Tony Robbins Look not about upon other men's minds and understandings, but look right on forwards with a nature, both that of the universe, in those things that happen unto thee, and thine in particular, in those things that are done by thee, doth lead and direct thee. Now everyone is bound to do that, which is consequent and agreeable to that end, which by his true natural constitution he was ordained unto. As for all other things, they are ordained for the use of reasonable creatures, as in all things we see that that which is worse and inferior is made for that which is better. Reasonable creatures, they are ordained one for another, that therefore which is chief in every man's constitution is that he intend the common good. The second is that he yield not to any lusts and motions of the flesh, for it is the part and privilege of the reasonable and intellective faculty that she can so bound herself as that neither the sensitive nor the appetitive faculties may not any ways prevail upon her, for both these are brutish, and therefore over both she challengeth mastery, and cannot any ways endure, if in her right temper, to be subject unto either, and this indeed most justly. For by nature she was ordained to command all in the body, the third thing proper to man by his constitution, is to avoid all rashness and precipitancy, and not to be subject to error. Do these things then, let the mind apply herself and go straight on, without any distraction about other things, and she hath her end, and by consequent her happiness. If you are the smartest person in the room, then you are in the wrong room. Don't share your personal life with anyone. Do not let anyone have anything that could harm you. If you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. African Proverb If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Happiness doesn't diminish when you share it. If you go to work on your goals, your goals will go to work on you. If you go to work on your plan, your plan will go to work on you. Whatever good things we build, end up building us. Jim Rohn What solitude is, and what kind of person a solitary man is? Solitude is a certain condition of a helpless man. For because a man is alone, he is not for that reason also solitary. Just as though a man is among numbers, he is not therefore not solitary. When then we have lost either a brother or a son or a friend on whom we were accustomed to repose, we say that we are left solitary, though we are often in Rome, though such a crowd meet us, though so many live in the same place, and sometimes we have a great number of slaves. For the man who is solitary, as it is conceived, is considered to be a helpless person and exposed to those who wish to harm him. For this reason, when we travel, then especially do we say that we are lonely when we fall among robbers. For it is not the sight of a human creature which removes us from solitude, but the sight of one who is faithful and modest and helpful to us. For if being alone is enough to make solitude, you may say that even Zeus is solitary in the conflagration 
and bewails himself, saying, Unhappy that I am who have neither Hera, nor Athena, nor Apollo, nor brother, nor son, nor descendant, nor kinsman. This is what some say that he does when he is alone at the conflagration. For they do not understand how a man passes his life when he is alone, because they set out from a certain natural principle, from the natural desire of community and mutual love, and from the pleasure of conversation among men. But nonetheless a man ought to be prepared in a manner for this also, to be able to be sufficient for himself and to be his own companion. For as Zeus dwells with himself and is tranquil by himself, and thinks of his own administration and of its nature, and is employed in thoughts suitable to himself, so ought we also to be able to talk with ourselves, not to feel the want of others also, not to be unprovided with the means of passing our time. To observe the divine administration and the relation of ourselves to everything else. To consider how we formerly were affected toward things that happen and how at present. What are still the things which give us pain. How these also can be cured and how removed. If any things require improvement, to improve them according to reason. For you see that Caesar appears to furnish us with great peace that there are no longer enemies, nor battles, nor great associations of robbers, nor of pirates. But we can travel at every hour and sail from east to west. But can Caesar give us security from fever also? Can he from shipwreck, from fire, from earthquake, or from lightning? Well, I will say, can he give us security against love? He cannot. From sorrow, he cannot. From envy, he cannot. In a word, then, he cannot protect us from any of these things. But the doctrine of philosophers promises to give us security even against these things. And what does it say? Men, if you will attend to me, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you will not feel sorrow, nor anger, nor compulsion, nor hindrance, but you will pass your time without perturbations and free from everything. When a man has this peace, not proclaimed by Caesar, for how should he be able to proclaim it? But by God through reason, is he not content when he is alone? When he sees and reflects, now no evil can happen to me. For me there is no robber, no earthquake. Everything is full of peace, full of tranquility. Every way, every city, every meeting, neighbor, companion is harmless. One person whose business it is supplies me with food, another with raiment, another with perceptions and preconceptions. And if he does not supply what is necessary, he gives the signal for retreat, opens the door and says to you, Go, go whither, to nothing terrible but to the place from which you came, to your friends and kinsmen, to the elements. What there was in you of fire goes to fire, of earth to earth, of air to air, of water to water. No Hades, nor Acheron, nor Cocytus, nor Pyrophlegethon, but all is full of gods and demons. When a man has such things to think on and sees the sun, the moon, and stars, and enjoys earth and sea, he is not solitary nor even helpless. Well then, if some man should come upon me when I am alone and murder me, Fool, not murder you, but your poor body. What kind of solitude then remains? What want? Why do we make ourselves worse than children? And what do children do when they are left alone? They take up shells and ashes, and they build something, then pull it down and build something else, and so they never want the means of passing the time. Shall I then, if you sail away, sit down and weep, because I have been left alone and solitary? Shall I then have no shells, no ashes? But children do what they do through want of thought, and we through knowledge are unhappy. Every great power is dangerous to beginners. You must then bear such things as you are able, but conformably to nature, but not. Practice sometimes a way of living like a man in health. Abstain from food, drink water, Abstain sometimes altogether from desire, in order that you may sometime desire consistently with reason, 
and if consistently with reason, when you have anything good in you, you will desire well. Not so, but we wish to live like wise men immediately and to be useful to men. Useful how? What are you doing? Have you been useful to yourself? But I suppose you wish to exhort them. You exhort them. You wish to be useful to them. Show to them in your own example what kind of men philosophy makes, and don't trifle. When you are eating, do good to those who eat with you. When you are drinking, to those who are drinking with you. By yielding to all, giving way, bearing with them, thus do them good, and do not spit on them your phlegm. Doubt can only be removed by action. To lead an orchestra, you must turn your back on the crowd. By performing your own duties, you attain the highest state of freedom and self-realization. Bhagavad Gita Don't tell your friends that you're happy. Don't make them angry. Don't tell your enemies that you're unhappy. Don't make them happy. Perfectionism is a disease. Procrastination is a disease. Action is the cure. Successful people maintain a positive focus in life no matter what is going on around them. Jack Canfield For it is a thing very possible that a man should be a very divine man, and yet be altogether unknown. This thou must ever be mindful of, as of this also, that a man's true happiness doth consist in very few things, and that although thou dost despair, that thou shalt ever be a good, either logician or naturalist, yet thou art never the further off by it from being either liberal or modest or charitable or obedient unto God. One finds limits by pushing them. You may not lead a comfortable life with a single source of income. You need to build others. The mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. Buddha What is a good man but a bad man's teacher? What is a bad man but a good man's job? Wheels of justice grind slow but grind fine. If you are irritated by every rub, how will your mirror be polished? Rumi Against or to those who readily tell their own affairs. When a man has seemed to us to have talked with simplicity about his own affairs, how is it that at last we are ourselves also induced to discover to him our own secrets, and we think this to be candid behavior? In the first place, because it seems unfair for a man to have listened to the affairs of his neighbor and not to communicate to him also in turn our own affairs. Next, because we think that we shall not present to them the appearance of candid men when we are silent about our own affairs. Indeed, men are often accustomed to say, I have told you all my affairs. Will you tell me nothing of your own? Where is this done? Besides, we have also this opinion that we can safely trust him who has already told us his own affairs. For the notion rises in our mind that this man could never divulge our affairs, because he would be cautious that we also should not divulge his. In this way also the incautious are caught by the soldiers at Rome. A soldier sits by you in a common dress 
and begins to speak ill of Caesar, then you, as if you had received a pledge of his fidelity by his having begun the abuse, utter yourself also what you think, and then you are carried off in chains. Something of this kind happens to us generally. Now as this man has confidently entrusted his affairs to me, shall I also do so to any man whom I meet? For when I have heard, I keep silence if I am of such a disposition. But he goes forth and tells all men what he has heard. Then if I hear what has been done, if I be a man like him, I resolve to be revenged. I divulge what he has told me. I both disturb others and am disturbed myself. But if I remember that one man does not injure another, and that every man's acts injure and profit him, I secure this, that I do not anything like him. But still I suffer what I do suffer through my own silly talk. True. But it is unfair when you have heard the secrets of your neighbor for you in turn to communicate nothing to him. Did I ask you for your secrets, my man? Did you communicate your affairs on certain terms, that you should in return hear mine also? If you are a babbler and think that all who meet you are friends, do you wish me also to be like you? But why, if you did well in entrusting your affairs to me, and it is not well for me to entrust mine to you, do you wish me to be so rash? It is just the same as if I had a cask which is watertight, and you one with a hole in it, and you should come and deposit with me your wine that I might put it into my cask, and then should complain that I also did not entrust my wine to you, for you have a cask with a hole in it. How then is there any equality here? You entrusted your affairs to a man who is faithful and modest, to a man who thinks that his own actions alone are injurious and useful, and that nothing external is. Would you have me entrust mine to you, a man who has dishonored his own faculty of will, and who wishes to gain some small bit of money or some office or promotion in the court, even if you should be going to murder your own children like Medea? Where is this equality? But show yourself to me to be faithful, modest and steady. Show me that you have friendly opinions. Show that your cask has no hole in it, and you will see how I shall not wait for you to trust me with your affairs. But I myself shall come to you and ask you to hear mine. For who does not choose to make use of a good vessel? Who does not value a benevolent and faithful adviser? Who will not willingly receive a man who is ready to bear a share, as we may say, of the difficulty of his circumstances, and by this very act to ease the burden by taking a part of it? True, but I trust you. You do not trust me. In the first place, not even do you trust me. But you are a babbler, and for this reason you cannot hold anything. For indeed, if it is true that you trust me, trust your affairs to me only. But now, whenever you see a man at leisure, you seat yourself by him and say, Brother, I have no friend more benevolent than you nor dearer. I request you to listen to my affairs. And you do this even to those who are not known to you at all. But if you really trust me, it is plain that you trust me because I am faithful and modest, not because I have told my affairs to you. Allow me then to have the same opinion about you. Show me that, if one man tells his affairs to another, he who tells them is faithful and modest. For if this were so, I would go about and tell my affairs to every man, if that would make me faithful and modest. But the thing is not so, and it requires no common opinions. If, then, you see a man who is busy about things not dependent on his will and subjecting his will to them, you must know that this man has ten thousand persons to compel and hinder him. He has no need of pitch or the wheel to compel him to declare what he knows. But a little girl's nod, if it should so happen, will move him. The blandishment of one who belongs to Caesar's court, desire of a magistracy or of an inheritance, and things without end of that sort. 
you must remember then, among general principles, that secret discourses require fidelity and corresponding opinions. But where can we now find these easily? Or if you cannot answer that question, let someone point out to me a man who can say, I care only about the things which are my own, the things which are not subject to hindrance, the things which are by nature free. This I hold to be the nature of the good, but let all other things be as they are allowed. I do not concern myself. You don't always have to be going, being and doing. It's really okay to just chill. Accept what is, let go of what was, have faith in what will be. Do not seek to have everything at once, but be content to advance in the way which leads to it. Discourses. This quote encourages patience and gradual progress towards our goals. It advocates for a balanced approach to life, emphasizing the importance of steady growth and development. Most of the time you have to swallow the pain and learn to grow up by yourself. Do it now. Sometimes later becomes never. The biggest rewards in life are found outside your comfort zone. Live with it. Fear and risk are prerequisites if you want to enjoy a life of success and adventure. Jack Canfield When someone prides themselves on being able to understand and explain Chrysippus, say to yourself, if Chrysippus had not written obscurely, this person would have nothing on which to pride themselves. But what do I want? To understand nature and to follow her. Therefore I seek someone who can explain this to me, and when I hear that Chrysippus can do so, I go to him. But I do not understand his writings so I seek someone who can explain them to me. Now, up to this point there is nothing to be proud of. When I find someone to explain them, what remains is my putting his principles into practice. This is the only thing to be proud of. But if I am impressed merely by the act of explaining, what else have I accomplished but become a philologist instead of a philosopher? except only that I can explain Chrysippus instead of Homer. No, when someone says to me, explain Chrysippus to me, rather than feel proud, I would blush when I am unable to manifest actions that agree and harmonize with Chrysippus's teaching. People are capable at any time in their lives of doing what they dream of. Great men are meteors designed to burn so that earth may be lighted. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill If you want to do something, don't delay but don't sacrifice what you want for what you want right now. Do not be afraid to make a hard choice. The hard choices are the best ones you end up making. Now I see that if one doesn't know how to die, one can hardly know how to live because death is a part of life. Thich Nhat Hanh. How a man should proceed from the principle of God being the father of all men to the rest. If a man should be able to assent to this doctrine as he ought, that we are all sprung from God in an especial manner, and that God is the father both of men and of gods, 
I suppose that he would never have any ignoble or mean thoughts about himself. But if Caesar should adopt you, no one could endure your arrogance. And if you know that you are the son of Zeus, will you not be elated? Yet we do not so. But since these two things are mingled in the generation of man, body in common with the animals, and reason and intelligence in common with the gods, many incline to this kinship, which is miserable and mortal, and some few to that which is divine and happy. Since then it is of necessity that every man uses everything according to the opinion which he has about it. Those, the few, who think that they are formed for fidelity and modesty and assure use of appearances, have no mean or ignoble thoughts about themselves. But with the many it is quite the contrary. For they say, What am I, a poor miserable man with my wretched bit of flesh? Wretched. Indeed, but you possess something better than your bit of flesh. Why then do you neglect that which is better, and why do you attach yourself to this? Through this kinship with the flesh, some of us inclining to it become like wolves, faithless and treacherous and mischievous. Some become like lions, savage and untamed, but the greater part of us become foxes and other worse animals. For what else is a slanderer and a malignant man than a fox, or some other more wretched and meaner animal? See, then, and take care that you do not become some one of these miserable things. You don't want everybody as a friend anyway. Don't ruin your health in order to earn money. You will end up spending your money to recover your health and that is not reciprocal. Have patience. All things are difficult before they become easy. Sa'adi. A good life has some bad days too. You will look back at your life with much more regret for the things that you didn't do than for the things that you did. Successful people maintain a positive focus in life no matter what is going on around them. Jack Canfield See, these are the words of a philosopher. This is the disposition of a man who will do good to others. Here is a man who has listened to discourses, who has read what is written about Socrates as Socratic, not as the compositions of Lysias and Socrates. I have often wondered by what arguments, not so, but by what argument. This is more exact than that. What, have you read the words at all in a different way from that in which you read little odes? For if you read them as you ought, you would not have been attending to such matters, but you would rather have been looking to these words. Enitus and Melitus are able to kill me, but they cannot harm me, and I am always of such a disposition as to pay regard to nothing of my own except to the reason which on inquiry seems to me the best. Hence, whoever heard Socrates say, I know something, and I teach. But he used to send different people to different teachers. Therefore, they used to come to him and ask to be introduced to philosophy by him. And he would take them and recommend them. Not so. But as he accompanied them, he would say, Hear me today discoursing in the house of Quadratus. Why should I hear you? Do you wish to show me that you put words together cleverly? You put them together, man, and what good will it do you? But only praise me. What do you mean by praising? Say to me, admirable, wonderful. Well, I say so. But if that is praise, whatever it is which philosophers mean by the name of good, what have I to praise in you? If it is good to speak well, teach me, and will praise you. What then? Ought a man to listen to such things without pleasure? I hope not. 
For my part, I do not listen even to a lute player without pleasure. Must I then, for this reason, stand and play the lute? Hear what Socrates says. Nor would it be seemly for a man of my age, like a young man composing addresses, to appear before you. Like a young man, he says. For in truth this small art is an elegant thing, to select words and to put them together, and to come forward and gracefully to read them or to speak. And while he is reading to say, There are not many who can do these things, I swear by all that you value. Does a philosopher invite people to hear him? As the sun himself draws men to him, or as food does, does not the philosopher also draw to him those who will receive benefit? What physician invites a man to be treated by him? Indeed, I now hear that even the physicians in Rome do invite patients. But when I lived there, the physicians were invited. I invite you to come and hear that things are in a bad way for you, and that you are taking care of everything, except that of which you ought to take care, and that you are ignorant of the good and the bad, and are unfortunate and unhappy. A fine kind of invitation. And yet, if the words of the philosopher do not produce this effect on you, he is dead, and so is the speaker. Rufus was used to say, if you have leisure to praise me, I am speaking to no purpose. Accordingly, he used to speak in such a way that every one of us who were sitting there supposed that someone had accused him before Rufus. He so touched on what was doing. He so placed before the eyes every man's faults. The philosopher's school, ye men, is a surgery. You ought not to go out of it with pleasure, but with pain for you are not in sound health when you enter. One has dislocated his shoulder, another has an abscess, a third a fistula, and a fourth a headache. Then do I sit and utter to you little thoughts and exclamations that you may praise me and go away, one with his shoulder in the same condition in which he entered, another with his head still aching, and a third with his fistula or his abscess just as they were. Is it for this, then, that young men shall quit home and leave their parents and their friends and kinsmen and property, that they may say to you, Wonderful, when you are uttering your exclamations, Did Socrates do this, or Zeno, or Cleanthes? What then? Is there not the hortatory style? Who denies it? As there is the style of refutation, and the didactic style, who then ever reckoned a fourth style with these, the style of display? What is the hortatory style? To be able to show both to one person and to many the struggle in which they are engaged, and that they think more about anything than about what they really wish. For they wish the things which lead to happiness, but they look for them in the wrong place. In order that this may be done, a thousand seats must be placed, and men must be invited to listen, and you must ascend the pulpit in a fine robe or cloak, and describe the death of Achilles. Cease, I entreat you by the gods, to spoil good words and good acts as much as you can. Nothing can have more power in exhortation than when the speaker shows to the hearers that he has need of them. But tell me who, when he hears you reading or discoursing, is anxious about himself, or turns to reflect on himself, or when he has gone out says, The philosopher hit me well, I must no longer do these things. But does he not, even if you have a great reputation, say to some person, He spoke finely about Xerxes? And another says, No, but about the battle of Thermopylae? Is this listening to a philosopher? Change before you have to. The shortest distance between two points is often unbearable. Knowledge is virtue. Plato. This quote emphasizes the central role of knowledge in achieving moral perfection and a just society.
No amount of success can compensate for failure at home. Set high standards for yourself and live up to your own expectations. The meeting of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there is any reaction, both are transformed. Carl Jung When someone treats you badly or says bad things about you, remember that they do or say these things because they think it is appropriate. This is because it is not possible for someone to act on how things appear to you, but on how things appear to them. Accordingly, if someone has a wrong opinion, because this is the person who has been deceived, it is they who suffer the harm. In the same way, if someone supposes that a true conjunction is false, it is not the conjunction that is harmed, but the person who has been deceived. If you proceed, then, from these principles, you will be gentle with the person who abuses you, saying on all such occasions, to them, this is how it seemed. Just because you're sad, it doesn't mean you should keep your mouth shut. Sometimes you will be disappointed and heartbroken multiple times, but it's how you respond that matters. The wise adapt themselves to circumstances as water molds itself to the pitcher. Chinese proverb. No company is better than bad company. It's not worth killing yourself over a company that'll replace you in two days if you're gone. If you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you'll spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is, to go on doing things you don't like doing. Alan Watts Whatsoever in any kind doth happen to anyone is expedient to the whole, and thus much to content us might suffice that it is expedient for the whole in general. But yet this also shalt thou generally perceive, if thou dost diligently take heed, that whatsoever doth happen to any one man or men. And now I am content that the word expedient should more generally be understood of those things which we otherwise call middle things, or things indifferent, as health, wealth, and the like. Willpower is to the mind like a strong, blind man who carries on his shoulders a lame man who can see. Our anxiety does not come from thinking about the future, but from wanting to control it. To be wronged is nothing, unless you continue to remember it. Confucius Don't look back. You are not going that way. When you try to please everybody, you almost always please nobody. The more a thing tends to be permanent, the more it tends to be lifeless. Alan Watts Let death and exile and all other things that seem terrible appear daily before your eyes, but especially death, ah, and you will never entertain any abject thought, nor long for anything excessively. Maybe the path that scares you the most is the one you need to take. Better to say nothing than to say something bad.
Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. Epictetus Better to say nothing than to say something bad. Always look at where you're going, not where you've been. You are the self, the one without a second, Papa G. There is not any man that is so happy in his death, but that some of those that are by him when he dies will be ready to rejoice at his supposed calamity. Is it one that was virtuous and wise indeed? Will there not someone or other be found who thus will say to himself, well, now at last shall I be at rest from this pedagogue. He did not indeed otherwise trouble us much, but I know well enough that in his heart he did much condemn us. Thus will they speak of the virtuous. But as for us, alas, I how many things be there, for which there be many that glad would be to be rid of us. This therefore, if thou shalt think of whensoever thou diest, thou shalt die the more willingly, when thou shalt think with thyself. I am now to depart from that world, wherein those that have been my nearest friends and acquaintances, they whom I have so much suffered for, so often prayed for, and for whom I have taken such care, even they would have me die, hoping that after my death they shall live happier than they did before. What then should any man desire to continue here any longer? Nevertheless, whensoever thou diest, Thou must not be less kind and loving unto them for it. But as before, see them, continue to be their friend, to wish them well and meekly and gently to carry thyself towards them, but yet so that on the other side it make thee not the more unwilling to die. But as it fareth with them that die an easy quick death, whose soul is soon separated from their bodies, so must thy separation from them be. To these had nature joined and annexed me. Now she parts us. I am ready to depart, as from friends and kinsmen, but yet without either reluctancy or compulsion, for this also is according to nature. Learn to be the person you need to be, and then others will need you too. Sometimes being alone is the best medicine to your soul. I will reveal to you a love potion, without medicine, without herbs, without any witch's magic. If you want to be loved, then love. Hikado of Rhodes Never give up on something you really want. It's difficult to wait but it's more difficult to regret. Do not chase after happiness. It is always in you. The more credit you give away, the more will come back to you. The more you help others, the more they will want to help you. Brian Tracy How we should struggle with circumstances. It is circumstances which show what men are. Therefore, when a difficulty falls upon you, remember that God, like a trainer of wrestlers, has matched you with a rough young man. For what purpose, you may say, why that you may become an Olympic conqueror, but it is not accomplished without sweat. In my opinion, no man has had a more profitable difficulty than you have had if you choose to make use of it as an athlete would deal with a young antagonist. We are now sending a scout to Rome, but no man sends a cowardly scout, who if he only hears a noise and sees a shadow anywhere, comes running back in terror and reports that the enemy is close at hand. So now, if you should come and tell us, fearful is the state of affairs at Rome, terrible is death, terrible is exile, Terrible is calumny, terrible is poverty. Fly, my friends, 
the enemy is near. We shall answer, Be gone, prophesy for yourself. We have committed only one fault, that we sent such a scout. Diogenes, who was sent as a scout before you, made a different report to us. He says that death is no evil, for neither is it base. He says that fame is the noise of madmen. And what has this spy said about pain, about pleasure, and about poverty? He says that to be naked is better than any purple robe, and to sleep on the bare ground is the softest bed. And he gives as a proof of each thing that he affirms his own courage, his tranquility, his freedom, and the healthy appearance and compactness of his body. There is no enemy, he says. All is peace. How so, Diogenes? See, he replies, if I am struck, if I have been wounded, if I have fled from any man, this is what a scout ought to be. But you come to us and tell us one thing after another. Will you not go back, and you will see clearer when you have laid aside fear? What then shall I do? What do you do when you leave a ship? Do you take away the helm or the oars? What then do you take away? You take what is your own, your bottle and your wallet. And now if you think of what is your own, you will never claim what belongs to others. The emperor says, lay aside your laticlave. See, I put on the angustoclave. Lay aside this also. See, I have only my toga. Lay aside your toga. See, I am naked. But you still raise my envy. Take then all my poor body. When at a man's command I can throw away my poor body, do I still fear him? But a certain person will not leave to me the succession to his estate. What then? Had I forgotten that not one of these things was mine? How then do we call them mine, just as we call the bed in the inn? If then the innkeeper at his death leaves you the beds all well, but if he leaves them to another, he will have them, and you will seek another bed. If then you shall not find one, you will sleep on the ground, only sleep with a good will and snore, and remember that tragedies have their place among the rich and kings and tyrants. But no poor man fills a part in the tragedy, except as one of the chorus. Kings indeed commence with prosperity, ornament the palaces with garlands. Then about the third or fourth act they call out, O Cithiron, why didst thou receive me? Slave, where are the crowns where the diadem? The guards help thee not at all. When then you approach any of these persons, remember this that you are approaching a tragedian, not the actor, but Oedipus himself. But you say, such a man is happy, for he walks about with many, and I also place myself with the many, and walk about with many. In sum, remember this, the door is open. Be not more timid than little children, but as they say, when the thing does not please them, I will play no loner, so do you. When things seem to you of such a kind, say I will no longer play and be gone. But if you stay, do not complain. Sometimes a hypocrite is nothing more than a man in the process of changing. Good people do not need laws to tell them to act responsibly, while bad people will find a way around the laws. The one who is unaffected by pleasure and pain, who is steady in success and failure, and who remains undisturbed by the changing conditions of life, is a true yogi. Bhagavad Gita Life is like a book. Some chapters are sad, some are happy, but all are necessary for the full story. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Peace is present right here and now in ourselves and in everything we do and see. Every breath we take, every step we take can be filled with peace, 
joy, and serenity. Thich Nhat Hanh. Of Sextus, mildness and the pattern of a family governed with paternal affection, and a purpose to live according to nature, to be grave without affectation, to observe carefully the several dispositions of my friends, not to be offended with idiots, nor unseasonably to set upon those that are carried with the vulgar opinions, with the theorems and tenets of philosophers, his conversation being an example how a man might accommodate himself to all men and companies, so that though his company were sweeter and more pleasing than any flatterer's cogging and fawning, yet was it at the same time most respected and reverenced, who also had a proper happiness and faculty, rationally and methodically, to find out and set in order all necessary determinations and instructions for a man's life, a man without ever the least appearance of anger or any other passion, able at the same time most exactly to observe the stoic apathiana or unpassionateness, and yet to be most tender-hearted, ever of good credit, and yet almost without any noise or rumor, very learned, and yet making little show. Go forth on your path, as it exists only through your walking, See people for who they are, not who you need them to be. A bird does not sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song. Chinese proverb. If he sends reinforcements everywhere, it will be weak everywhere. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. Most people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Alex Hormozzi Are you so curious, Socrates? and such a busybody, and how does it concern you how we act, and what is it that you say? Being of the same community and of the same kin, you neglect yourself, and show yourself a bad citizen to the state, and a bad kinsman to your kinsmen, and a bad neighbor to your neighbors. Who then are you? Here it is a great thing to say. I am he whose duty it is to take care of men, for it is not every little heifer which dares to resist a lion. But if the bull comes up and resists him, say to the bull, if you choose, and who are you, and what business have you here? Man, in every kind there is produced something which excels, in oxen, in dogs, in bees, in horses. Do not then say to that which excels, who then are you? If you do, it will find a voice in some way and say, I am such a thing as the purple in a garment. Do not expect me to be like the others, or blame my nature that it has made me different from the rest of men. What then? Am I such a man? Certainly not. And are you such a man as can listen to the truth? I wish you were. But however, since in a manner I have been condemned to wear a white beard and a cloak, and you come to me as to a philosopher, I will not treat you in a cruel way, nor yet as if I despaired of you. But I will say, young man, whom do you wish to make beautiful? In the first place, know who you are, and then adorn yourself appropriately. You are a human being. And this is a mortal animal which has the power of using appearances rationally. But what is meant by rationally, conformably to nature and completely? What then do you possess which is peculiar? Is it the animal part? No. Is it the condition of mortality? No. Is it the power of using appearances? No. You possess the rational faculty as a peculiar thing. 
adorn and beautify this, but leave your hair to him who made it as he chose? Come, what other appellations have you? Are you man or woman? Man. Adorn yourself then as man, not as woman. Woman is naturally smooth and delicate, and if she has much hair on her body, she is a monster and is exhibited at Rome among monsters. And in a man it is monstrous not to have hair, and if he has no hair, he is a monster. But if he cuts off his hairs and plucks them out, what shall we do with him? Where shall we exhibit him? And under what name shall we show him? I will exhibit to you a man who chooses to be a woman rather than a man. What a terrible sight! There is no man who will not wonder at such a notice. Indeed, I think that the men who pluck out their hairs do what they do without knowing what they do. Man, what fault have you to find with your nature? That it made you a man? What then? Was it fit that nature should make all human creatures women? And what advantage in that case would you have had in being adorned? For whom would you have adorned yourself if all human creatures were women? But you are not pleased with the matter. Set to work then upon the whole business. Take away. What is its name? That which is the cause of the hairs. Make yourself a woman in all respects, that we may not be mistaken. Do not make one half man and the other half woman. Whom do you wish to please? The women. Please them as a man. Well, but they like smooth men. Will you not hang yourself? And if women took delight in catamites, would you become one? Is this your business? Were you born for this purpose, that dissolute women should delight in you? Shall we make such a one as you a citizen of Corinth, and perchance a prefect of the city, or chief of the youth, or general or superintendent of the games? Well, and when you have taken a wife, do you intend to have your hairs plucked out? To please whom and for what purpose? And when you have begotten children, will you introduce them also into the state with the habit of plucking their hairs? A beautiful citizen and senator and rhetorician. We ought to pray that such young men be born among us and brought up. Do not so, I entreat you by the gods, young man. But when you have once heard these words, go away and say to yourself, Epictetus has not said this to me, for how could he? But some propitious good through him, for it would never have come into his thoughts to say this, since he is not accustomed to talk thus with any person. Come then, let us obey God, that we may not be subject to his anger. You say no, but if a crow by his croaking signifies anything to you, it is not the crow which signifies, but God through the crow. And if he signifies anything through a human voice, will he not cause the man to say this to you, that you may know the power of the divinity, that he signifies to some in this way and to others in that way, and concerning the greatest things, and the chief he signifies through the noblest messenger? What else is it which the poet says? For we ourselves have warned him, and have sent Hermes the careful watcher, Argus's slayer, the husband not to kill nor wed the wife. Was Hermes going to descend from heaven to say this to him? And now the gods say this to you, and send the messenger, the slayer of Argus, to warn you not to pervert that which is well arranged, nor to busy yourself about it but to allow a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman, a beautiful man to be as a beautiful man, and an ugly man as an ugly man. For you are not flesh and hair, but you are will. And if your will beautiful, then you will be beautiful. But up the present time I dare not tell you that you are ugly, for I think that you are readier to hear anything than this. But see what Socrates says to the most beautiful and blooming of men, Alcibiades. Try, then, to be beautiful. What does he say to him? Dress your hair and pluck the hairs from your legs. Nothing of that kind. But adorn your will, take away bad opinions. How with the body? 
leave it as it is by nature. Another has looked after these things, entrust them to him. What then? Must a man be uncleaned? Certainly not. But what you are and are made by nature cleanse this. A man should be cleanly as a man, a woman as a woman, a child as a child. You say no, but let us also pluck out the lion's mane, that he may not be uncleaned, and the cock's comb, for he also ought to be cleaned. Granted, but as a cock, and the lion as a lion, and the hunting dog as a hunting dog. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. The only sad thing would be clinging to the past once it's out of reach. The truth is, like a lion, you don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. Augustine of Hippo Happiness is wanting what you get. If you stay positive in a negative situation, you win. Sometimes you may feel like you are just about to realize your goal only to fall short. That is no reason to quit. Defeat happens only to those who refuse to try again. Nick Vujicic Whatsoever is was made for something, as a horse, a vine. Why wonderest thou? The sun itself will say of itself, I was made for something, and so hath every god its proper function. What then were then made for? To disport and delight thyself? See how even common sense and reason cannot brook it. Think of tomorrow, the past can't be mended. What you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. Entia non sunt multiplicanda praeter necessitatem. Entities should not be multiplied unnecessarily. William of Ockham. Not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some come to clear your path. When you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. The real key is to live in a state of awareness, to seek our higher self. Deepak Chopra Not to wander out of the way, but upon every motion and desire, to perform that which is just, and ever to be careful to attain to the true natural apprehension of every fancy that presents itself. When in doubt, just take the next small step. Practice self-compassion. We are all human and everyone makes mistakes. Veni, vidi, vici, I came, I saw, I conquered, Julius Caesar. The moment when you want to quit is the moment when you need to keep pushing. We humans have two great problems. The first is knowing when to begin. The second is knowing when to stop. The major value in life is not what you get. The major value in life is what you become. Jim Rohn How a man on every occasion can maintain his proper character. To the rational animal only is the irrational intolerable, but that which is rational is tolerable. Blows are not naturally intolerable. How is that? 
See how the Lacedaemonians endure whipping when they have learned that whipping is consistent with reason. To hang yourself is not intolerable. When, then, you have the opinion that it is rational, you go and hang yourself. In short, if we observe, we shall find that the animal man is pained by nothing so much as by that which is irrational, and, on the contrary, attracted to nothing so much as to that which is rational. But the rational and the irrational appear such in a different way to different persons, just as the good and the bad, the profitable and the unprofitable. For this reason particularly, we need discipline in order to learn how to adapt the preconception of the rational and the irrational to the several things conformably to nature. But in order to determine the rational and the irrational, we use not only the of external things, but we consider also what is appropriate to each person. For to one man it is consistent with reason to hold a chamber pot for another, and to look to this only, that if he does not hold it, he will receive stripes, and he will not receive his food. But if he shall hold the pot, he will not suffer anything hard or disagreeable. But to another man not only does the holding of a chamber pot appear intolerable for himself, but intolerable also for him to allow another to do this office for him. If, then, you ask me whether you should hold the chamber pot or not, I shall say to you that the receiving of food is worth more than the not receiving of it, and the being scourged is a greater indignity than not being scourged, so that if you measure your interests by these things, go and hold the chamber pot. But this, you say, would not be worthy of me. Well then, it is you who must introduce this consideration into the inquiry, not I. For it is you who know yourself, how much you are worth to yourself, and at what price you sell yourself. For men sell themselves at various prices. For this reason, when Florus was deliberating whether he should go down to Nero's spectacles and also perform in them himself, Agrippinus said to him, Go down. And when Florus asked Agrippinus, Why do not you go down? Agrippinus replied, because I do not even deliberate about the matter. For he who has once brought himself to deliberate about such matters, and to calculate the value of external things, comes very near to those who have forgotten their own character. For why do you ask me the question, whether death is preferable or life? I say, life. Pain or pleasure? I say, pleasure. But if I do not take a part in the tragic acting, I shall have my head struck off. Go then and take a part. But I will not. Why? Because you consider yourself to be only one thread of those which are in the tunic. Well, then it was fitting for you to take care how you should be like the rest of men, just as the thread has no design to be anything superior to the other threads. But I wish to be purple, that small part which is bright and makes all the rest appear graceful and beautiful. Why then do you tell me to make myself like the many? And if I do, how shall I still be purple? Priscus Helvidius also saw this and acted conformably. For when Vespasian sent and commanded him not to go into the Senate, he replied, It is in your power not to allow me to be a member of the Senate, but so long as I am, I must go in. Well, go in then, says the emperor, but say nothing. Do not ask my opinion, and I will be silent. But I must ask your opinion, and I must say what I think right. But if you do, I shall put you to death. When then did I tell you that I am immortal? You will do your part, and I will do mine. It is your part to kill. It is mine to die, but not in fear. Yours to banish me, mine to depart without sorrow. What good then did Priscus do, who was only a single person? And what good does the purple do for the toga? Why, what else than this? That it is conspicuous in the toga as purple and is displayed also as a fine example to all other things. But in such circumstances, another would have replied to Caesar who forbade him to enter the Senate. I thank you for sparing me. But such a man Vespasian would not even have forbidden to enter the Senate 
for he knew that he would either sit there like an earthen vessel, or if he spoke, he would say what Caesar wished, and add even more. In this way, an athlete also acted who was in danger of dying unless his private parts were amputated. His brother came to the athlete who was a philosopher and said, Come, brother, what are you going to do? Shall we amputate this member and return to the gymnasium? But the athlete persisted in his resolution and died. When someone asked Epictetus how he did this, as an athlete or a philosopher, as a man, Epictetus replied, and a man who had been proclaimed among the athletes at the Olympic Games and had contended in them, a man who had been familiar with such a place, and not merely anointed in Batten school. Another would have allowed even his head to be cut off if he could have lived without it. Such is that regard to character which is so strong in those who have been accustomed to introduce it of themselves and conjoined with other things into their deliberations. Come then, Epictetus, shave yourself. If I am a philosopher, I answer, I will not shave myself. But I will take off your head? If that will do you any good, take it off. Some person asked, how then shall every man among us perceive what is suitable to his character? How, he replied, does the bull alone, when the lion has attacked, discover his own powers and put himself forward in defense of the whole herd? It is plain that with the powers the perception of having them is immediately conjoined, and therefore whoever of us has such powers will not be ignorant of them. Now a bull is not made suddenly, nor a brave man, but we must discipline ourselves in the winter for the summer campaign and not rashly run upon that which does not concern us. Only consider at what price you sell your own will, if for no other reason, at least for this, that you sell it not for a small sum. But that which is great and superior perhaps belongs to Socrates, and such as are like him.